Very quick recap. Where did we start last game? Just give me a start off point. Dripping caves. Oh, yeah, sure. So we were in these caves after we had, like, ass stomped a bunch of goblins and an ogre. And then my boy, the shifter. Um, <laughs> I, I don't remember your name. Sorry. Theodore. Theodore, yeah. Theo had run into a little side cave and almost gotten his legs eaten off by a black pudding. We um, we found out that we had a couple of villagers not accounted for. We went to look firm. We had a weird barter slash ass kick session with a goblin about uh, this one villager that he had because you told us that he was going to give her back, but she was minus some fingers. And then I caught a peek of him trying to gnaw her fingers off. So we charged in and... Um, he also gave me some gold because I robbed him after we were done, but I left him with some armor and some items. I didn't take everything they had because Carmen really was the like, villagers. what's up? That all, all that stuff was actually the villagers. Oh, see Carmen. I don't know. He's not super smart. And he also like, isn't going to rob anybody blind. The problem was that he saw the goblin babies. So he had a moment of pity anyways. So we leave, we go back to the village with the villagers that we have. Uh, after some fighting, and then what the order showed up, and oh, good for you, you got inspiration. So, yeah, then the order showed up. Oh, Bucky, get off my computer. No, Bucky, no. I love that uh, cat. So... <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, man. I mean, him and Darwin are crazy. I have to empty my trash from my desk in my room every day, or else Dar Darwin eats whatever he can find in it that's plastic, tries to kill himself. Quick aside for the cats. Not part of the recap. Anyways, squirrel back on track. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so we got back to the, the town with the townsfolk. Yay. And then the Order of the Gauntlet showed up and they like promoted Jakad and Carmen because uh, we did heroism. And so they were like, way to go. Um, and then apparently Jack left with them. And I think that's about it. Sweet. And that is pretty much all that happened there's a couple more things so i'll go over that you you were speaking to morak morak is the dwarf innkeeper the inn oh, that you yeah. burned down and oh yeah he gave me the frosty ring he gave you a magical ring which you found out that it can uh, frost your ale with a tap on the cup just tap it against it and it frosts it you're also immune to being scryed or divined mm-hmm and he asked you to return it to his friend's nearest heir, which is um, his next of kin, his son, who lives in Bryn Shander. Bryn Shander right. is the furthest north on the map. It's so far north, it doesn't even show on the overlay. But... And what was that guy's name I'm supposed to bring it to again? <laughs> Sarek. Sarek, son of... Sarek, son of Artis Simber. Artis Simber. Okay. Cool. Good to know. And he's he also stated that he has a cousin named Augric Breithelm, who lives in Bryn Shander, someone that you could connect with. Right. Um, someone that you can talk to about the current events. He's had some letters from Augric. And Augric stated that frost giants have been on the prowl in the frigid north. So, that's pretty much where we left off. It gave you guys a destination, a goal, something to do. And we're going to skip about two weeks. In those two Sweet. weeks, you three, since Jakad's no longer there, have to choose how you're going to venture north. Are you going to continue on with Herschel Rhinelander? Are you going to go your separate ways from him and his caravan and just take horses? Are you going to walk? I think oh, you already ruled out horses. boats. <clears throat> yeah, uh, Carmen doesn't like the water. I think we had a couple horses that we took from the uh, snake guys. Mm-hmm. Okay. So you could probably take horses up. And Not you can procure curve, more than that. You can procure a couple more horses if you like. So each could have their own. So Herschel, is he continuing to go north? 
He is, but they're kind of a slow going traveling caravan. They're doing trading on the way. They're stopping they have... at nearly every farm and town. And they have other guards, right? They don't need us necessarily. Yeah, they have other guards. Okay. Yeah, maybe we should go our own way. Okay. So you'll all be headed your own way. In these two weeks, you pass through Waterdeep. That's where you drop Jakad off. You let him go. And in the same time frame, you found another traveling companion. That would be Mr. Thomas. You've been on the road with him for approximately one week. You're headed north, and you found that he's a pretty easy going. He just wants to be, I don't know. Any, you guys got good wisdom, all of you. He just wants to be accepted. He just wants to be okay. part of a group that accepts him for who he is, which you don't even know who he is, really. He's kind of an oddity. Come on, you know who he is. You've been traveling, <laughs> Carmen. You've been traveling with this guy longer than you were with Jakad already. No kidding, right? <laughs> <laughs> a week? <laughs> you were with Jakad twenty-four hours. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I guess we're we're probably cool. I, Carmen probably understands that he's daft, but well-meaning. Yeah, he's got an intelligence of eight, so very daft. <laughs> okay, so I probably and how old is he? I don't uh, know. Twenty-five. In At least Triton years, young. I don't know. I, what probably, I think they probably age like I think they age like humans. Probably, probably mostly. So I probably just treat him like he's a special kid that has like, you know, weird Mister Strength. Okay. Mm. You're you're humanoid sized, right? Like human sized. Yep. Okay. Yeah, which is bigger than me. Yeah. Way bigger. Yep. Yeah, I'm like I mean, he's an imposing figure. He he looks right. like he he could be half bred with a Goliath. Yeah, you have an 18 strength. Sweet. I mean, I yeah, let's do it. So yeah, you've been on the road for a couple weeks with Thomas for one, and you're headed up the high road. The high road is the main road that runs along the coast. It's the trading road, and it's the safest path that you can take to get to Bryn Shander. And eventually, once you get to the very far north, which this is going to be about... I believe I calculated it at two months travel on horse. So 60 Whoa. days. It's far. If you see that little uh, mile gauge at the bottom, the 100, 200 miles, oh, yeah. I believe it's about 600 miles. Oh, yeah, that's pretty far. 500 and some. So I didn't measure it exactly, but it's far. Holy cow. And Brent Shander is in the spine of the world. It's like real north. It's, yeah, it's as far north as you go. It's the right. furthest north. It's like Alaska or something. Yeah. All right. But I, I'm i just going to say for the sake of brevity that Theodore, you went with them as a guide and as a new adventuring companion. I will say at some point my character is going to make a point of either I get uh, a third or if it was after we came up to the barbarian and a fourth of what we get or a, uh, a sort of <clears throat> like two or three gold to get started just because I'm still considering myself kind of like an independent agent. So you haven't been paid? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so my character is going to especially go up to the guy who I know got gold from the goblins. Sure. And address that. So well, why don't you go ahead and address that? Yeah, let's have a talk. Okay. Uh, so we're traveling up north. Uh, if you would like to continue to use my services, I believe uh, we would need to come to an arrangement of coin. Use your services. Uh, yes, been, I, I thought you were one of us now. I don't think you're his type. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I, he's not, I he's not bearded you, enough. <laughs> if I am one of you as a traveling companion, then I would expect a uh, fourth of the uh, the gains that you've got. 
Fine. Uh, uh, let's see. I started with 15. And I, sorry, I, sorry, I, how is 10 set with you? 10 will do fine. Thank you. Do I get a discount because you cuddle next to me at night to keep warm? Oh, God. This is great. <laughs> <laughs> Nay. <laughs> oh, well. So I also gave him 10 gold. <laughs> <laughs> I scratched my head and shrug. <laughs> Sweet. Unfor unfortunately, <laughs> puts me at the big fat zero. <laughs> <laughs> I bet that's where you're gonna stay all campaign. <laughs> Probably. I mean, I'm not gonna argue if you just hand me gold, so I'll take it. Uh, I, I, no, I'm wait, wait now. <laughs> Listen, that gold is from before you were venturing with us, so it belongs to you. And now further gains oh. we split, but you keep the gold you start with. Didn't oh. give it up, lad. All right. Ah, uh, but I appreciate your honesty. I. And I'll give it back afterwards. <laughs> I, I give, I yeah, give you the as well. <laughs> um, also, I'm going to give the Crown of Madness spell scroll to Art. Sweet. And that is a level <clears throat> two spell, I believe, right? Yeah. So, oh, boop, I just removed magics. it. Removed it from my inventory. I said, uh, you know, I mage. Yeah. Yes. Look here, look here, lad. No, no, not you, not you, uh, Tom. I will call you by name, son. <laughs> ah, <laughs> yes, the mage with a name. I, the you. mage with a name. I, no, you, Art. I have the scroll for you. The other mage with a name. I. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna laugh the whole time. <laughs> I figure Carmen probably doesn't have a lot of patience for a lot of people, but if you are obviously simple, he gives you a wide berth. Uh, <laughs> he gives you a lot of freedom, especially if you're simple and you look like you're built like a Mack truck. Yeah. And you don't want to get thrown <laughs> into the ocean. <laughs> right. Then he's much nicer to Tom than usual. Uh, so there is a new tone to this campaign. <laughs> uh, yes, you would like many songs. Yes. Uh, thank you, Mr. Carmen. Nay, no, no, no. I, I, you can make more of use of it than I can. So here, it's yours. And I'll give you ten gold as well, since you were there for the Goblin Caves. <laughs> <laughs> So, here you go. Oh, Ten more you. gold for you. Uh, by, by chance, do we know where we are? Where we are? I've been uh, too busy reading. Let us know my job. Talk to the woodsman. Uh, where have we made it so far? Is so far, stuff? you've passed Waterdeep. And <laughs> soon, you're going to pass the Red Rocks to the west, which is Mr. Thomas's homeland. Where he came from. Oh, and the Sword Mountains is where I'm from. And the Sword so Mountains we're... is where you're from. You're neighbors. We're, yeah, yeah, we're going to pass right between our homes. Yay. Where's the Red Mountains? I see the Sword Mountains. Yeah, he uh, said Red Sword Rocks. Mountains. Red, Red Rocks in the water. Red Rocks oh, in right the water. Now. Oh, okay. There you go. Thank you. All the little islands. <laughs> and... You'll pass by there in about another week. So, mm -hmm. so far it's been two weeks since you left Nightstone. Um, okay. Is there anything you guys wanted to do in these three weeks besides traveling? Like any things you wanted to address? Any conversations you wanted to have about what's going on? Your current goals? Your future goals? Uh, I figure Carmen just wants to like keep the group together. Um... And, you know, yeah. So we're moving north as long as everybody's on board. I told uh, Morak that we'd head up to Bryn Chander, so I plan to uh, fulfill, like, the letter of the bargain that I struck with him. Okay. Sweet. Would you like to see the Red Rocks when we pass by? I can show you many fine things. Nay. We can explore. We didn't have the time, lad. 
Uh, 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 are you sure you're just not afraid of the water? <clears throat> I didn't like the water, it's true. <laughs> but you were built like a boat. Uh, thank you. Perfect. So it's settled. We will go no, see the Red nay. Rocks. No, nay. <laughs> I will not go out in the water if I can help it. Uh, we do have bridges. You don't uh, have to swim the whole way. No, no thank you. Let's just <sighs> keep on going north. All right. What about the Sword Mountains? Do you wish to see your home on the way? No, I'm fine. I'd rather not. I believe there are certain points where you could actually see them from the road as we travel. I, I'll point to you. Hmm. Very well. Do you I like for... music? And I pull out this huge... It kind of looks like a ram's horn. And then I blast a one single note over and over again. Oh. <laughs> I scout far ahead. <laughs> it only makes one sound, but it is beautiful. If not in melody, then in harmony. <laughs> and before we go too far, Josh, I think you're... Discord might be clicking and clacking as you start talking again. Oh, is it? Every time you is start it? talking, I hear a little click. You sound like you are dropping Legos. Nope, I am not dropping Legos. So, I don't... What do I do about that? Uh, go to that setting where you can go to... The... Uh, <laughs> voice levels. Gear symbol. Voice and Gear video. Symbol. Voice and video. And then that bar slider. The, uh, the input volume or the output volume? Oh, down here. Automatically determine sensitivity. Yeah, is that checked on or off? It is checked off. I'm at negative 50 dB. Check negative it off. Decibels. Maybe that'll help. Okay, so now we're automatically determining input sensitivity. Is that better or different? It's kind of the same. I don't know what's wrong It's kind of the same. Okay. No, I don't know what to do for you guys. Sorry. Oh, well. We'll just have to live with it. Okay. <laughs> I don't actually hear any Legos. Okay. I might be, too, that sometimes when I'm talking, I'm clicking the mouse. Maybe that's what you're hearing. No. Uh, definitely you're, are moment. you browsing the interwebs? <laughs> no. I'm just mm. moving the map around. Click, click, click. Right. I just get fidgety. No worries. I... I couldn't tell you what it is. Definitely digital, but it's not a big deal. I was going to say it before we get too far. Okay. <clears throat> so in the next week, you four traveling companions now pass by the Red Rocks to the west and the Sword Mountains to the east to your hometowns, your homelands. Oh, it is a shame we get the wind from the east at this time. We cannot smell the ocean nor my home. Instead, we smell these dwarves and the rocks and all such wonderful things. I all such wonderful things. <sighs> and hey, little that? mage, little mage. Oh, uh, Mr. Thomas, how are you doing? Great. Why do you read so much? Why do you not just do magic all the time? Uh, that's how I learned to do more magic. Uh, why don't you practice, though? <laughs> well, <laughs> I look over you. I'm like. You didn't want to see him practice. He throws fire at ends and burns them down. I, actually, Mr. Carmen, I've been working on that. Uh, uh, here, let me show you. By chance, do you have a torch? Uh... Nay. Nay, I didn't need him. Do I? St I think I still need him. Let me check. Description or features. Range, range, range. I don't think I have dark sight. I have. I have a torch here. I use this. It is my cigar. Mm. Awesome. Um, could you light that on fire for me? I, yes, that's where all the flavor comes from. <laughs> <laughs> Inhaling is where all the power comes from. Okay. Uh, hold it in your hand uh, and reach out. 
and I so the torch is lit up and I'm going to uh, use controlled flame and I'm going to make uh, a simple shape of uh, uh, Thomas or something that would look like Thomas uh, holding his um, you know, uh, weapon high in the air and it's just kind of sitting there and flaming up. Uh, I've, I've I've learned to control these flames. Oh, very interesting. I can I do can control them, and I'm going to cast the gust cantrip from below it, so it blows the fire super high. <laughs> and it blows it out. And it blows it out. Uh, okay. Well, then that happened. <laughs> it did not look like me, tiny mage. It's, it looked more like my cousin. <laughs> so we'll try again next time. You, this is why I recommend you practice. Oh, maybe we can practice together. I see you are talented as well. So I relight the torch, even though it's midday. <laughs> yes, continue to practice. <laughs> there, you hold it in case you have any more mistakes. <laughs> uh, that's all right. We can put it out right now. But I just I... relit it. Well, then go ahead and smoke it. <laughs> I'll just carry it for a while. <laughs> I, I like the sounds. It's crackly. <laughs> what? Okay. <laughs> and I'll just kind of turn. I guess I'll turn to uh, Mr. Carmen. Uh, I... I've been, I've been meaning to apologize about burning that end down. Uh, Nay. I promise I'll, I'll never harm anything with fire again. I am just giving you grief, son. As part of being traveling companions, we're supposed to give each other shite. That's how this works. I'm not very accustomed to it. I haven't well, really been around many people except for Chakot. Listen, you're one of us now, so, you know, it's fine. You do the best you can. And we'll work out the rest, but I'm going to give you shite as much as possible because that's what you do. That's how it is. Don't give Tom shite. He's too big. He'll give it back and it'll hurt. <laughs> that's that's, an, that's impressive, impressively uh, impressively uh, caring of you uh, or something uh, for someone as short of stature as yours. Fuck you too. <laughs> now, now you're that, getting it. That was that's just how it works. That was just me giving you shit. I. That's how it works, son. As you guys then, continue uh... north, it's going on about week three. You pass by some forks in the road that would take you to other cities, but you haven't actually ventured off the high road going to these places so for the most part you're just traveling on the high road and camping off to the side nearby the road you've passed by traders here and there people coming and going there's some people that even passed you that um you're guessing by the pace they're traveling or maybe the post you've passed by a few outposts that are the post where they would uh change their horses out and continue on for getting out messages quickly. Other than that activity, you haven't seen too much except the wildlife that is abundant in these areas. And it's still, it's just the beginning of spring. It's three weeks past the first day of spring, and it's beautiful out in this area. However, near the third week of travel, there it seems to everyone that uh, there's a pungent smell in the air that gets stronger and stronger the further you travel north. But the ranger, that would be Theodore, would let you know that you're coming up on the high road to a large swamp called the Mere of Dead Men. And the high road passes right to the east of the entire Mere. Mr. Garmin, I know you're afraid of the water, but I believe it is time for bath. You begin to uh, smell like the mire of dead men under your armors. 
Uh, I am sure I, this I, tiny I mage would help you. <laughs> I sniffed my armpit a little bit. <laughs> I'm Listen, sure he would help you. Tom, I'm no afraid of water. I'm just afraid of swimming. I don't mind taking a nice bath in a big bucket or, you know, a tub of some sort. But, but I didn't like to swim. That is my... And, I, and uh, I'm not afraid. I just generally dislike it. <laughs> yes, we are all disliking things that we are afraid of. I too am uh, disliking things that I am afraid of. Um, yes. So perhaps. What, what do you dislike then, lad? Uh, avoiding the water. <laughs> That's what I dislike. Hmm. Sorry, son. There'll be a lot of that in this trip, probably. If if we go to the shore, we can at least get some extra water not bound for our canteens and we can uh, use that as bath water. I bet, the, I bet the tiny mage can heat it up so it is even comfortable. If you want a bath, we'll just pay for one at an inn. I don't want one. I want you to have one, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Fine. Next time we stop, I'll pay for a bath. You're, you're squeaking in your armor where all the sweat is rubbing against the metal bits. Nah, it's just lubricant. That's how it works. That is your own body's lubricant, and it smells like muck. Meh. It's the smell of a fighting man. It's good. Yeah, but I just... All right, here's the thing. How about you walk on my left so that we don't have to deal with it? <laughs> Fine. I'm sorry I have offended your sensibilities. I'll hey. walk on your left. That's strange. It must be a strong smell because I can still smell. Well, mayhap it's no me. Up to the mire of the dead man. So, I, the mire it's of the dead man. It's the swamp. Well, well I, uh, I take back everything I said. <laughs> Fine. Continuing up the path. <laughs> <laughs> In Ooh, the middle house. of the high road, far out of sight almost, you're just coming up to the first time you can see the city that is built directly in the middle of the high road. You can see the high walls built around the road. The path is clear. There's not a lot of trees in this area. There's small hills and the swamp to your west. And the city's built around the swamp as well, just a little bit. And the road goes right by the coast of the swamp. Yeah. Does anyone have history? I do. Uh, you can roll it. You might know what locations these are. Because oh, you didn't get a don't... map. Actually, too, never mind. I thought I did have history. I thought you did, too. Did you accidentally click it? No, I didn't touch using it. Using character? <laughs> <laughs> no. no. No one has history. Are you stealing these things from us? Do Theodore, I maybe you know can roll since... your intelligence. Since some of us kind of live near here. Carmen or uh, I? Yeah, you could roll your intelligence. We, we both. <laughs> I'll give it a shot. And boop. Nope. That's a no. <laughs> Stupid dwarf. <laughs> <laughs> did you roll, Theodore? I did not. I figured they got a roll because uh, they live near here. Did you you can roll because you are a guide of sorts. <laughs> and there we go. Um, what What do you know? <laughs> something awesome. All right, I'm supposed to say something. Uh, <laughs> you can say whatever you want. Critical file. Uh, say that they uh, built the roadhouse. Uh, I can't even think of anything. That's fine. So you say nothing. Okay. They're arguing I'll say back nothing. and forth about what this place might be. They have they remember the name. It's on the tip of their tongue. They can't really remember it. Um, but to continue on, you could go around the city if you want to the east or the town. It's not really that large of a place. As you get closer, the walls are more and more in sight. And they're only 15 feet high. You hear the, the sounds of the marsh 
is it amplifies in your ears the buzzing of insects, the croaking of the frogs, and everything stinks around now. It's much, Ugh. much worse than Thomas was stating earlier. Ugh. But you can go Perfect. straight through to the city where the gatehouse is directly built over the road. Or you can go to the east of it and skirt around. It'll be harder to go to the west through the marsh itself. We should Perfect. stop and take a break. I have nothing but you three to talk to for like many days. I was Carmen, did you want to take a bath? You mentioned that earlier, I believe. Oh, nah. No. It's mostly the swamp that he smells. I didn't smell worse than anyone else. I would love a bath. Okay. Well, um... It's been mayhap, too long. Mayhap we should stop for a while. We could be like fresh men. I And perhaps maybe. find a troll up or two. <laughs> Yeah, I bet we can give one or two of them to this small mage. Come mm. here, little bit. We'll teach you new tricks. Mm. Do, do we know anything about uh, this city? Uh, yes, it smells terrible. Uh, may, may, maybe we can uh, pass through it uh, or go around it. Why would you? Are, are you not tired of just talking to our horses and each other? You you just stared down at your book. Perhaps there will be new books inside. Art, mayhap we stop and at least uh, refresh our supplies, get more rations, things of that nature. I'm just hoping they're friendly. Eh. A whole town? There are people. Some of them are friendly, some are not. I, To be honest, I just don't like the smell and I'd like to get away from it. Well, we got another week of it. <laughs> yes. Mayhap we'll get used to it. But there's probably plenty more where that came from. A little bug bites your neck, Arthur. <clears throat> oh, well, uh, perhaps we um, hurry into an end then. I. Stable <clears throat> horses, they'd probably like a night of oats and a restful place instead of a night on the road. The closer and closer you get, the city is built with a palisade around it. Large wooden spikes uh, in the ground, pounded into the ground. The gatehouse is open and it looks like there's a couple guards that do roam the walls. They must have a walkway around the entirety of the palisades. There's torches that are out front, big braziers actually, that light the path as you get closer. However, it's still um, only late in the afternoon. It's not dark out yet. All right, so we just ride up to the gate, I guess. We yeah. will announce ourselves with music. Nay. <laughs> Tom, not everyone likes... Tom, put your music tool down. Not everyone likes the music, friend. But it seems unfair. We can see them from so far away. But I... you, and they can now hear us. Let me explain a thing to you, son. There are things up in the road that are not men, that are dangerous. Goblins and orcs and other filth of that kind. And when you blow the horn like that, they all know where we are. And we would have, may have liked to stay hidden from some of them if they're not directly on our path. <laughs> Do the goblins and orcs build such fine cities as this one in front of us? Nay, all I'm saying is when we're out on the road, perhaps you'd like to not play the horn, just in case there are some goblins lying in wait outside the city. Hmm. Well, but I, so it is now water and music you dislike. I dislike a great many things, son. A great many things. I'm, I'm beginning to form a list. Aye, good for you. Um, Mr. Thomas, that's a beautiful sound. It, it may be best suited for one of victory after we complete a, mm -hmm. a task of some sort. Yes. Let's complete the task of going into the city. Maybe a great task uh, uh, <laughs> as to 
defeating our foes. Maybe oh. save the form for that. Would you like to spar? Oh, uh, nay. I Listen, never. I would never insult Tom. You. Tom, lad, save it for when we kill some goblins or some orcs or some other evil creatures. All right. Perhaps All we right. can buy some in the market. Let's nay. go. Uh, you didn't buy them. <laughs> That's not how it works. <laughs> you have been to the wrong markets. I I have been to a lot of wrong places. I bet we can. Uh, you can find anything you go to the right market. I don't want to buy goblins though. Mm. Wild goblins are so much more fun. Well, I pat you on the back. <laughs> perhaps we can buy some the centaurs. They are also fun and good nah. for riding. Oh yeah. <laughs> Let's get some baths. <laughs> Oh, here we are at the end. This is great. <laughs> <laughs> I will let you guys take go one, as long as you want because my voice is one all bath the way there. and two Toronto's. Still a little sick, so you can banter all day long for all I care. Yeah, I think uh, you're, we're walking and talking. Yeah, we're riding and talking, anyways. Riding and talking. Yeah. You pass through the gate under the gatehouse. No one stops you. It. Seems dreary here, and there's a slight spring drizzle, and it's thick and humid as it hits, and it's heavy, and it soaks your clothes from head to toe over time. People aren't out and about doing much right now at this time of evening. There's a few people that are walking, carrying different, uh, one guy's carrying some firewood to his house, it looks like. But you do see one in the sign swinging in the slight breeze, the bloated goat. Oh, nice. Destiny awaits. Someone right. stumbles out of it. Half it's like a dominoes. Away. There's one in every city. <laughs> <laughs> Someone half drunkenly stumbles outside of the bloated goat, pukes a little bit on the street, and uh, continues on his straight path, steps right through his own puke. Mmm. Oi, boys, this is the place. Uh, uh, Mr. Carmen, uh, I don't know if this is a spot for uh, me. Don't worry, Art. If anyone folks with you, they folk with us. You'll be fine. I slap you on the back. <laughs> Just a little slap throws your body into a kind of a forward momentum. Uh, well, yeah. uh, come pretend you are our leader. Go inside and demand a room. And is, there, is there a stable nearby? And stables. yeah, there's a stable nearby. I could, okay. I could never demand anything. Um, I said pretend. <laughs> No, maybe that's and the I, job. I stopped that's smiling. For our... I said pretend. Uh, Tom, leave him be. <laughs> Mr. Tom, Tom, maybe this is a job be, suited Tom. for our ranger. <laughs> I let the woodsmen do it. Uh, all right. We'll stable our horses. So you Mr. take Tom, a few minutes Tom. to stable your horses. It only costs uh, a few copper for the night for each. I mean, I'll give, I'll give him a silver. Okay, I'll pay so you for give it. him silver to stable all four horses. While you're doing that, um, you're going in, Theodore? Yep. Uh, they mentioned I should uh, secure the room, so. You go in, and as you open the door, you hear the sounds of a little bit of chatter here and there. There's not much revelry. There's no music in the background. People look like whoever's here, they've been here a long time. And these are all the regulars. There's no travelers that you can tell. Except for one small man who is sitting by himself at the bar, a halfling. And he's got the high stools because they need a little bit of a, a increase in height to reach the bar. He's having himself a big pint. The bartender is, bar is human. Yep. Is he well, by yeah. the halfling? Yep, he's just uh, serving people as they come, but he's served the halfling his drink. He looks at you. You guys make eye contact. What do you have? Uh, I'll have a couple rooms for the night. I've got 
two rooms. That's all I have left. Take both. That'll be five silver for the night. Two and a half each. Give him uh, five silver. Here you go. Here's the keys. The rooms are upstairs. They're not much, but they should be clean and comfortable. They might keep out the smell. Maybe. He sniffs big. You want anything to Is eat it? or drink? Uh, I'm good. Uh, by the way, is Electrum in this, or is it, uh... You know, I don't know if 5th edition is Electrum. I think they do. Yeah, it's, uh, half a gold. Yeah. Yep, so it's the halfway point between silver and gold. Ah, okay. I was thinking it was 10 gold for, uh, or 10 silver for gold. But yeah, it looks like it is actually that way. Okay. And Electrum is 5 silver? Yep, Electrum is 5 silver. So you could give him an Electrum. No, I'd have to give him a gold and have him split it to five silver for me. Sure. You can do that too. Okay. There's more of you. Yes, there's four. Have them come in, see if they want something to eat and drink. I'll check on them. Thank you. He wipes down the bar, walks to the other end as you're walking back outside. At about that time, you guys are done stabling your horses. The sun is setting fully, and they're outside lighting the torch lamps. You see a few people dedicated to this task. Mr. Theodore, were you able to uh, acquire the rooms? They had two rooms available. Uh, Does it look like a nice place inside? Looks like there's uh, people who are used to it. It... Mm. uh, it isn't going to be nice regardless due to the smell, but hopefully it'll be something decent. Uh, perhaps we go buy incense or sage or some some fine uh, candles at the, uh, the candle store. Bloodbath and beyond. <laughs> <laughs> First, oh, I'm going to get something to drink and something to eat. I walk into the bar. All right, so let's start there. All right. You walk into the bar. There's about four tables in total. There's maybe a total of like seven patrons here. People, there's a few guys that are sitting by themselves. One guy is sitting back in the corner without a table, just drinking by himself, and the halfling is at the bar. He's the only one sitting at the bar. I'll go sit at the bar and take a high stool too. How many, yeah, how many high stools are there? Uh, there's like three high stools, and then there's a few regular sized. As I as I walk through up to get to the bar, anybody I pass, I will nervously say, uh, "Good evening, uh, good evening, sir. Good evening." <laughs> okay. Okay. So I, I want to pull him close before we get to the bar. I'm gonna say, "Art, listen. I know you didn't know how this works." So I'll give you one free clue. You didn't talk to them if they did not talk to you and didn't make eye contact. Leave them the fuck alone. And mostly they'll leave you the fuck alone. But do not look and do not talk unless one of them talks to you first. I just wanted them to make sure they knew that I was pleasant. Nay, now they just know you're nervous and you don't know what the fuck you're doing. I'll follow your lead from here on out. Hi, shut the fuck up. Come get a drink. Perhaps a water. What? What? <laughs> what? Nay. Water is for breathing, you small man. You cannot drink, drink water. I. You must drink it out. You, you, you cannot drink, drink water. Poison, you breathe water. Uh, Ale is good. If you need to water it down, then do that. But you don't want just straight water next to the swamp sun. It might have poisons in it. The ale is good because it disinfects everything. With its That's own why poisons. You drink ale. I. Good poisons. <laughs> That you need inside of you. Put hair on your face. You bald <laughs> face. Blood. I have just... I've never had an ale before. Holy fuck. Come what? sit next to me at the bar. And, and we'll the, show you how it's done. I thought you traveled with a warrior. Uh, I, he I, calls I, himself I, a man? Come, muscle mage. We'll show him. Listen. 
the ale uh, it, it, it can cloud judgment. Uh, uh, Listen, yes. I'm gonna. But put your you on judgment the is already shit. So I, uh, clouding <laughs> it is actually a nice thing. I I laugh. So we, we go sit at the bar. You go sit at the bar. The half lane looks over. Hi, right, let's get around for my friends. Oh, oh, no, no, thank you, sir. This one is I, very good to us. Sir. Art, if you didn't drink it, I'm going to the muscle mage to make you drink it. Uh, I don't. Uh, maybe I just show myself to my room. I'm, it's been a long day. You're not allowed to leave yet. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm not. <laughs> <my head. laughs> uh, we I need to kind of. We Do need those more practice. Bulbs. <laughs> just, just like with the fire, we need more practice. I, I look nervously over to the uh, uh, Thomas or uh, Theodore. I'm sorry. I'm probably uh, <laughs> sipping a drink. See? I look over at the halfling. I'm like, thank you, lad. I appreciate your <laughs> generosity. It'll be no problem. It's good to meet you again. I never got your names last time, he says. He's got a coppery red hair, and when he says that, he blinks sideways. He blinks sideways? You see a second set of eyelids blink. I'm sorry, I didn't know where I know you from. <laughs> oh, my name's Fogoros. Holy shite, I probably get kind of pale. Pull up a like, stool. <laughs> Come sit down. Did, did you meet me as well? I, do not I don't know you. You, oh well, you were talking to me before as if we were friends, and I appreciated that. And grab a but drink. Now, now we're friends. <laughs> okay, <laughs> Mr. Carmen, I um, should we trust this? You know, wait, Fogros. Interesting. I, 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 I peer I, when I saw the second set of eyelids mm. blink. I like kind of peer right into his face, getting closer and closer. Um, yeah, there's not much identifying marks that would, um, show him as Fulgoros, except for maybe the tone of his hair and his eyebrows. He's got coppery red hair. I kind of whisper conspiratorially, great lord of the sky, what are you doing here? And why are you in such a diminutive form? This is my other form. Diminutive? Halflings are a strong breed. Uh, why I'm here. <laughs> he smiles big. And why I'm here, okay. I'm in the north. Gonna see what's going on with these giants. I, I hear tales of well. uh, other tax things that have been going on up north. I, we're heading to Bryn Shander. Bryn Shander, you're going all the way north. I have to look ourselves. See what's what and all that. Well, if you're going I to Bryn Shander, I... Give you a word of warning. The cloth and veil. You need to avoid that area as much as possible. What would be the cloth and veil? The cloth and veil is where the great skyworm cloth, he resides the entire region there. A, a great ancient red dragon. Wait. Is he, are you friends? Dragon. No, we're not friends. <laughs> Who the, who's friends with a great ancient dragon? I I'm like be friends with the great ancient dragon. He just smiles. Hey, we be friends with the great ancient dragon, Tom. Mm -hmm. Now please drink your drink and mind the mind the other mage. Make him drink too. I I the tiny mage, and I wonder if he's a dragon. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> For real. <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> so good. Did you get the friends that came from Waterdeep? Hey, we did. The Order of the Gauntlet came. They did. They came and uh, they talked to Jock and he left with them after we got a promotion. Jock. Jock was the other one with you. Hey, he was the other one with the shield. The Paladin. He just takes a big drink. Looks like he downs a pint in about five seconds. Just glug, 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 glug. He slams it on the bar. Another one, please. I have Order. a really surprised look on my face. <laughs> That's how you do it. <laughs> He'll have another one, too. 
He points at your drink. I, I'll have another one, too. I drink my <laughs> drink and hold it back out. You chug your drink, hold it back out, and the bartender pulls, pours you a couple more. I won't be in town for long. I'm going to be heading out tonight. Well, safe travels to you. Wait, wait, wait. Um, maybe we should uh, go with you if you're headed north. I look at him, my eyes are huge, and I'm just like, what the fuck? <laughs> that's not going to be possible. Sorry. I. That's not going to be possible. I No. No need. Please. Uh, safe travels, and thank you for your hospitality here while we're here tonight. The drinks were appreciated. And then I look back at, uh, at, um, uh, oh, Thomas? <laughs> no, not Thomas. Uh, Arthur. Or, Theodore. Arthur. Theodore. Yeah. Thanks. Arthur. I look back at Arthur. name everyone sooner or later. Uh, <laughs> I'm like, Arthur, drink your fucking drink. Um, here, in, in, in one minute. Nay, you gotta drink it now. I'm not giving you a shite. Drink the drink. Do it now. Hey, perhaps you'd be a little more respectful of our great dragon friend, eh? Uh, what are you what? talking about, Mr. Thomas? I'm trying to be respectful of our Ned, great dragon you, friend. You don't need to pressure him in. He will drink when he is good and ready. I oh, fuck say. <laughs> you made a grave error of judgment, lad. <laughs> that is what the drink is for. Oh, good lord. I drink my second drink kind of fast and hold it out again. <laughs> um, Mr. Fogros, can, can you tell us more about this red dragon in the north? Cloth, old snarl. Hey. One second. What? Cloth, old snarl? Yeah, that was weird. I don't know what that is. He's having a stroke. <laughs> I think that's the name of the dragon. Sorry. He's having a stroke. <laughs> oh, fuck, run before he loses his form and destroys the bar. <laughs> they call him Old Snarl. His name is Cloth, and he, well, I already told you, he resides in the Cloth and Veil. Vale. He holds a vast influence over that land. And, uh, and you're, you're saying if we head to Brenchender, um, we might see him. No, I'm saying that you need to avoid that area. It's on the way. I didn't know where it is. Well, you'll get off the high road going north. And once you get off that road, you need to make sure to follow the northern means. Keep following that and don't. Do not take the ten trail east of that as the Cloth and Vale. You can take the ten trail all the way to Bryn Shander, but don't go any further east. I uh, no further east. Are you listening, woodsman? Stick to the road. Stick to the road. You should be fine. I am. I will stay on the road. Thank you for your advice. Hey, right. I want to see you make it there alive sometime. I'll probably be up there much long or much quicker than you. I do. You know a shortcut, you little man. I, I he know flies. A He's he flies. <laughs> oh, oh, I have another one. <laughs> oh. Yeah, stupid little man. <laughs> no, no, don't call him stupid, please. No, you are the stupid one. <laughs> when, when, while they're arguing, you see Carmen's face to... go pale. <laughs> while they're arguing, I'm going to kind yeah. of start to step back and slowly walk towards. Um, uh, Theodore oh. and be like, hey, uh, Mr. Theodore, may I have the key to the room? If you're I'm trying to step tired. away from the bar, you should roll stealth so that I don't see you because he if I see you... Stealth, he's stepping away from the bar. Oh. So then I'm like, hey, nope, you're not getting away that easy. You have to finish at least one drink. I'm very sleepy right now. You drink your drink. Oh, it's a I... sign of disrespect to not drink a drink that someone buys for you. Do you want to disrespect our friend here? I pointed the dragon. Then I bequeath it to you. Nay, you cannot do it. You, <laughs> you do not do that. Not in front of other people. <laughs> the halfling stretches his arm out all the way towards where Arthur's drink was, snatches it up, and chugs it down. Oh. He drank your bequeath. <laughs> I look away and just cover my face. <laughs> Can't waste a good drink. Nay. Can't waste a good drink. 
It's disrespectful. Well then, I will retire. Um, good night <laughs> to you, Mr. Fogoros. Leave room for me. I am a wi rather wide sleeper. I made it in one room, everyone else in another. <laughs> I like that setup. <laughs> <laughs> so then I'll just ask uh, Theodore for one of the keys and I'll go go up into the room. Hey, I'll give him one of the keys. <laughs> Which room are you in? Uh, this one. Blah, 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 blah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I am surprised that they have room numbers in the 700s when there are so few rooms here. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> 712? That's a strange room number. <laughs> it really just says eight. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> well, if you add the seven and the one, which is how you know you take the first two numbers because of the two and the 712. Hey, 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 hey. The seven and the one is where you get the eights from. It didn't hurt yourself, lad. Have another drink. Fogoro <laughs> <laughs> I... spins the stool around and he hops his little tiny legs off the stool. I'm going to be headed off now. I hope to see you again. I, I bow the waist. Thank you much, Lord of the Sky, for your advice and the drinks. And if you come across Have any good giants, flight. teach them a lesson. Don't let them live. Uh, I look at the other two and I look back at him. I'm like, uh, uh, to you, I'm a giant. <laughs> fine. <laughs> fine. Uh, will treat them harshly? Why do you not like giants? Is there something specific they've done to you? I don't like any of the giants, and the giants don't like me, and that's just the way it is. It's been that way for a long time. Oh, Dra right. Dragons don't tend to get along. Is that how it is? Kind of like orcs and dwarves. Kind of exactly. like orcs and dwarves, and orcs and dragons, and orcs tiny and mages and, and ale. orcs, and pretty much everything. I tiny mages and ale. I like tiny mages and ale. I and tiny well, mages and ale. He. Raises his cup, sets it on the counter, and heads out the bar. Heads out of the bar with goat. Until we meet again. Uh, I, I come running down the steps uh, in, in a panic. <laughs> and I, I'm trying to, like... What is I, it? I, What's I, wrong in the room? <laughs> oh, Mr. Fulgross, uh, have, has I, have I missed him? He's just headed out the door, but you do not miss him. Oh, wait, wait. He's got uh, the door partially open. I, I, I go up to him and I... I almost forgot to ask you a question. He turns around and the light's spilling outside into the walkway out, out in the night. What is that? Oh, I, I, I'm so sorry. I've been working on this question for a, a long time. And perhaps you know, you seem very wise. Uh, I, I have this letter from a friend. That on it, it says, who controls the ordinate? And uh, I was wondering if... Maybe you knew. What I the don't know the answer was. to that question. Hmm. Is that it? Uh, yes, I, I'm so sorry. Thank you for your time. And I'll uh, <laughs> run One back One thing before I leave. What's your I, names? <clears throat> oh, uh, my name is uh, uh, Arthur. Uh, our Triton friend. That's Mr. Thomas. Um, the ranger over there, he's uh, his name is uh, Mr. Theodore, and and that's Mr. Carbon. Until we meet again, I never forget a name. Hmm. And he heads out the door. That small one was weird, right? Aye, he's a dragon. <laughs> what? He, he's a dragon. <laughs> no. No, he's a half man. <laughs> no, listen, listen. He has the magic power to shape himself into whatever form he desires, or he has another form or something. But I, well, last time I saw him, he was a dragon. He was huge, and he blew lightning and destroyed a man and a horse simultaneously. As you're talking, I look a little bit confused, then a little bit of pity. And then at you like you're an adorable child or 
Uh, like, a, like, like I'm the like stupid a, one. Yeah, like you're, you're like a Saint Bernard puppy. You're like that's adorable. I have no idea what you're saying that for. <laughs> I'm like ah, another round of drinks, barkeep. The barkeep looks at Thomas and goes, "He's a fucking dragon." I he's a dragon. <laughs> He just smiles at you and serves another drink. I'll take mine to go. I think it is time for my bath. Yeah, all right. Have someone draw me up a bath. Oh, Mr. we don't bartender. do baths sir. Sorry. Wait, 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 wait. Do you have a tub? No, yeah. we don't have a tub, and there's no one to draw you a bath. Who who does baths? Not You're selling here. me selling me into the arms of your competitors. Who does baths? <laughs> Feel free to go to the competitors. This is the only inn. Uh, do you have a bathhouse? No, we don't have a bathhouse. Nobody house. takes baths in this whole place. You can go feel free to take a bath in the mirror. I feel like you are being rude to me for no good reason, and I am a little bit um, uncomfortable with this. So why don't you just tell me where the bathhouses are and we will all get along just great. If you keep going, I'm going to cut you off for the night. I, I, th Tom. I throw no, my listen. beer on the ground and say, consider me cut off. Now I am looking for water to wash myself. Why don't Tom, you step Tom. outside in the rain? You'll get washed off eventually. You want to step outside? This no, sounds Tom. like a kind of solution <laughs> that I've been looking for. I look at the barkeep and I'm shaking my head. No. <laughs> Tom, listen. Tom. <laughs> I can yeah. make water, and the mage can heat it. All we need is a tub. Mayhap, we'll find a tub somewhere in town, or a large enough cistern, or something. How much water can you make? Uh, let's take a look. How much water can I make? Uh, 30 gallons, we just, I think. Yeah, we just oh, make wow. a shit, a shit We just fill the rooms. <laughs> I can make 10 gallons of clean water yeah, within an open container. That's not quite a bath. No. <laughs> <laughs> you could soak your nether regions. Get, yeah, <laughs> sit in it. Sits bath. Uh, well, we'll have to make do. I, can, I do have the control water cantrip, so I can kind of move it around. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> uh, that'll work well enough. An entire city that smells like an asshole, and now I know why. Oh, fuck. <laughs> I look around at the regulars in the room. <laughs> they don't seem to care. <laughs> they <good>. all know. <laughs> it's dirty. It stinks to high heaven here. And they're just... There's a little bit of light chatter in the back corner where there's a few people sitting at a table. Besides that, it's pretty quiet in here. Well, until Thomas starts talking. Do you I guys don't. like music here at the end? <laughs> no, they do not like music. No, please. Please, no. Please. More than no. Right. It does not sound right unless it is underwater anyway. I probably is true. Yeah, I, I could see that. Why don't you go upstairs I, and switch spells with the mage? Why don't I do what with the mage? You cut <laughs> out in the middle of the sentence. <laughs> swap Why something. Yeah, we swap oh. elves. <laughs> Why don't you swab elves? <laughs> I was like, what? What is swab an elf? <laughs> no, swab, <laughs> swab an elf. <laughs> you don't you want know, to know. Swap your magics. Show them how to do magic. I'm going to take a bath. <laughs> I do not show the magic while taking baths. You do not have magic baths, well, then you're missing out, lad. I do not show the magic while taking baths. Ah, you do your magic in private, I see. Yeah, I can <laughs> control the water to make it do what I want. <laughs> uh, I look uncomfortable. <laughs> So, if you want, start. you could take a little bit. You could find a uh, a tub big enough to fit giant ass Thomas in. Collect rainwater and your water and heat it. 
That's mm. about the best bath you're gonna get. I mean, it's, it's probably all right. very nice. <sighs> mm. I like all first baths since I am the only one who breathes it. Everyone else may have afters. And you have to do it outside. Help yourself. Right. I'm fine without one. I take off my uh, little bit of shorts outside and then get in the tub. Just like swing your love hammer out in the road while you're getting <laughs> in the bath. Yeah, it's the bath time. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, <laughs> I'm going to stay inside and keep drinking. <laughs> I should probably buy new shorts anyway. These ones are old. I think Theodore's <laughs> going to go up to the room. <laughs> uh, okay, yep. Sweet. Time to so sleep. We're going right. to pass a little take, time. Take one to go. We're going to pass a little time. We're going to skip the bath scene. Fade to black mm-hmm. on that. That's Thank good. you. <laughs> <laughs> And you you sleep for the night. You're going to get a short rest in these next eight hours. If you did spend any spell slots, Arthur, you could recover one with Arcane Recovery. Anyone else, you have to wait for a long rest. So if you are using spell slots, mark them down. Oh, this is a good thing we got to share a twin-size mattress, small mage. It was just enough space for us. Uh, yeah. No need for blankets when you have companion. Oh boy. Uh, um, pardon me, Mr. Thomas. I'm I'm just looking to read my book and fall asleep. Oh, this uh, again. We just had sleep. Oh, it yes. is. It is time for breakfast. <laughs> Besides, you cannot read your book in the dark, and I put out torch. <laughs> Well, let's go get some breakfast then. That is perfect. If you want, this is a good time. You guys could restock. You could buy <laughs> materials if you need things, especially you, Matt, Arthur. Yeah. If you need things to write spells down in your spell book, this would be the Scrolls place. Scrolls and ink. I don't think I have enough money to do so right now. You didn't get any gold from Carmen? Why don't you take it back from him? He's not here. It's okay. (laughs) Uh, uh, Let's see. I just have... uh, Let's see. Can we go... go, Yeah. Is there like a shopping district? I would like to buy some incense. (laughs) It smells (laughs) awful. There is a small market district and there's a few shops. One is a trade post that has pretty much... A variety of anything and everything. Oh, oh, lavender, one of my favorites. So, if you want to do that, you can grab would... yourself some supplies from the player's handbook. Most of the things in the uh, shopping section are there, and you can just buy them at cost. All right. Uh, yeah, I'll. We don't have to role play my grabbing of lavender and rubbing it roll. all over your nipples. No, we don't have to role play no. that. Turn it into paste. <laughs> <laughs> So it, extra costs, good. it costs 50 gold to add, you know, like for pen and paper to add a spell in. Is that how it works? Is it um, 25 gold per level? That's fine. Uh, gosh, gosh darn it. I wish I knew that. So it's under your class section, <laughs> under wizard. It'll say adding spells to spell book. Matt has no class. <laughs> <laughs> That's for sure. For each level of spell, it takes two hours and costs 50 gold. So I guess for you, it would cost right. 100 gold. So that's not going to happen right now. Because that's no. a level two spell. Yep. So eventually, when you get enough gold, you could um buy the inks necessary for that. And that's what it costs, is right. inks. Okay. And if it's evocation, I believe the cost is half for you. Right, so it's, but Crown of Thorns, is that an application? It is not. No. <laughs> See, do I have traveler's clothes? I have adventuring gear. Uh, uh, Mr. Carmen, 
Mr. Carmen sure is sleepy today. <laughs> I hear him. I'm um, a knife in the background. Oh, yeah, I'm uh, <laughs> sharpening a knife. It's just my fork I'm eating. Were you here the whole time? Nope. Oh, okay. I just now got back on. Sweet. Is everybody else already on? Yeah, we're, we're all waiting huh? on you, man. We, we're oh, live. Sorry. Oh, we're live. Okay, cool. It's been like 15 minutes. <laughs> sorry, man. No, like <laughs> two minutes. It's been like 20 minutes. Good morning, Mr. Carmen. Hi, good morning. Uh, perhaps we can, can just sleep off the hangover a little bit. <laughs> well, it's a hangover. Never mind. <laughs> well, we should continue on out of this. We must make haste to get to north, especially to get out of this putrid smell. I bought so much. I bought an entire block of incense so that we can always have good smells. Thank you, Tom. It will be wonderful. I am also currently buying some rope. And, uh, I could call. Do, do, do. Let's see. Yeah, anything you want from the player's handbook, as long as you got gold for it. Yep. Well, in the I, uh, shopping section. I kind of like the small mage's ropes. I might buy a robe. Oh, you know what I do need is some new armor. Do they have that here? They do have new armor. Do you have it's the money scale for it? Pretty sure I do. I don't, I don't think scale, scale mails cost. But... Equipment. Oh, I have no idea. Armor. Scale mail is 50 gold. You got 50 gold? Oh, no, I don't. <laughs> 50 <laughs> gold? How much gold do you have? Uh, 20. Uh, I have 15 right here. Ah, it'll be fine. Once I get the, I, uh... have the, I have the other thirty if you need it. Um, <laughs> look at this guy, <laughs> one of the party. That's for sure. Sure, we can do that. <laughs> oh, I actually have nineteen, so I need thirty-one. Hi, <laughs> here's thirty-one. <laughs> <laughs> So you can get yourself a new set of scale mail and your AC will go back up to 17 instead of 15. Yep. I have given you 31 gold. I am cash poor. Sounds to be about everyone now. Yep. Well, uh, I I don't let um, Arthur hand over his gold. I, I push it back into his hands. So, Art, keep your gold. Uh, Even for uh, fancy books and whatnot. How much is this? None from you, lad. You hang on to your gold. Oh, oh. Thank you. And actually, I only had ten, so <clears throat> it's all right. All right, Thank keep you. it. Everyone eats for the morning, gets ready and prepped. Um, your rooms and your food was already paid for. Your horses being stable was paid for, and you can head out for the day. Back on the road, on the high road. Or you can do whatever you want. All right, time to go. Yep. Uh, I think I am done with all the things that I was going to grab. You have enough time to shop there? Yeah. Okay. So you get back out on the road and through the gatehouse on the northern side of the Carnath Roadhouse, you check out of the bloated goat and you're headed north to Bryn Shander. We're going to skip a few more days. So you'll have a full long rest if you spent any spell slots. Oh, hey, how much is a hand axe before we leave? I'm looking here. Let's see. 
axe. Hand axe. Let us be called. Uh, there we go. Five gold each. I oh, fuck. Never mind. That's, not, that's a pretty expensive. <laughs> I didn't have five gold left. We're used to having hundreds of gold, so therefore, you know, five gold, fifty gold, it's been no big deal. It is right now, though. <laughs> we need more cash. Yeah. Plus, when you want to get your good armors, that's going to be very expensive. Yep. I very very i will probably never have plate mail i i have two hand axes do you huh oh yeah <laughs> would you like one of these i think i yes i would love one of those thank you much I, i've got my inventory is all sorts of confused here yeah mine is rather i thought i had two as well but it looks like i have one well, maybe now you lost you. one <laughs> what's up maybe you lost one I, I guess I lost one. Perhaps the next time we go through, we might take a job so we can keep funding our journey. I may have as long as the next town doesn't smell quite so bad. I didn't want to stop in a town that smells like an asshole more than I have to. I just accidentally removed my hand axes. Just want to <laughs> remove one of them. <laughs> Nice. I'm trying to figure out how to add just one, too. Yeah. Mr. Theodore, to do you know of manage equipment? Mm, Mr. Theodore, okay. do you know of any town that would be nice to stop in? And maybe uh, stay a next, while to. The next good one, I would say, would be <gasps> Helm's Hold or Neverwinter. I'd assume Helm's Hold is just a hold. It's not on the road. So Neverwinter would be the next one. Well, then let's continue on to Neverwinter. And earn some gold. Never winter. That is like weeks away, right? I've never yeah. been that far north in my whole life. It's quite uh, a distance. There's a uh, Lelian Lelon before then, but uh, that's also near the near Dead Man, so it's not going to smell as good, but won't be quite in the center of it all. But I have never heard of that place. I... So you guys uh, saddle your horses. You get everything prepped, everything packed. You head back out on the road. Oh, yeah. And the few days pass. Do take your long rest if you need it. As you're journeying, and you're coming up to this uh, set of mountain range, this mountain range called the Sword Mounts, give me a perception check. But we haven't rolled at anything today. I know, this is hard. There's my 23. <laughs> my 6. Sweet. As a group, you're journeying up the road north, northwest, and very far off you see a tower that seems like you're heading directly towards it. It's very far off. Is it where? where are we now? You're only a few days, uh, you're kind of making the bend of the Mirror of Deadman. If this oh, okay. road goes northwest of the Mirror, you're right at that uh, northeastern edge before it makes that turn to the west. Okay. So we're seeing, looks like it might be Fandalin? No, you're actually seeing um, something on the path, you think. Oh, you like can see the mountains to the north and something, at least it looks like it's in your exact direction you're heading, looks like a large tower. It's really far off. The scale, you can't really tell. Now, Mr. Theodore, uh, by chance, do you know what that is? Do I, would I know anything about this? You do not. Your knowledge of... Um, the regions kind of ends at about Neverwinter. Hmm. At least for the Sword Coast, because you haven't been past that. And <laughs> your knowledge of the towns is very limited, but no, you don't remember this. If you've been up this way, you don't remember this. Doesn't look familiar at all. Do you think it likes music? Uh, I... No. I don't think so, Thomas. 
Perhaps this place has a better breath than the last. I may have. So well, as you continue sorry. down the road, the tower's scale is becoming more and more apparent as you're getting closer and closer. But something odd about this tower is the large purple top it has on top, like a large steeple. And it's not shaped exactly like a cone. It seems to be curved as if it was a large pointy hat, kind of like a wizard's cap, that crests mm. the top of this tower. You get That's a little a closer lot. and closer. This thing is huge, and it's set right on top of the path, literally where you're walking, where you have to go. I Should am we go around? So excited. Uh, I don't know. You're the guide. What do you think? I believe it is best to go around if we're looking to go north. Maybe go take a little sneaksy and and look and see what you have. Uh, I I tend not to want to investigate anything. Is um, it just a tower, or is it like a tower that has a little town around it, or it's just a tower? You're what still a bit off from it. I well, suggest we'll bypassing it. All right, we can get closer and see what what what's what, and then if it looks like it's not friendly, then we go around. But they might have work for us, or at least a place where we can stop. Rest for the night. Mr. Carmen, we're in the middle of the... Uh, we're not in the middle of the Mirror of Dead Men, but we're in the area uh, close to a place called Mirror of the Dead Men. I, I'd like to bypass this and get out of the area as soon as we can. You did not want to bypass the last roadhouse. I did. I wanted to continue. I, he's all about how wrong you were. He's not a very people person. He doesn't like meeting new people. We got, to, we got a nice long cuddle at that place it was worth our time oh i good for you nice Perhaps long cuddle this, huh? this, this will also be and i believe when we draw the straws it is your turn to be sharing <laughs> i did share with the woodsman i think the mages should stick together you guys can show each other magics and all that while you cuddle you know good for you learning and, sh and shite like that perhaps all right, well, let's go see if there is rooms. <laughs> As you get closer and closer, give me an investigation check. Mm. I am so sorry for what's about to happen. <laughs> <laughs> me too. <laughs> <laughs> So that's I... two successes and three failures. Oh, goodness. Oh. Um, yeah, well, our scout promises it's going to be okay. <laughs> <laughs> right. uh, he says it's fine, then I believe him. The only thing... You do gather some information. You just don't gather everything. But what you do gather is this tower was definitely not built here. In fact... If you look closely at the edges of the tower and the um, interesting spokes that come off the sides as if they're fins and they land on the ground as arches, the whole tower seems as if it's plopped down on everything and it's broken entire trees, smashed them into the ground and splintered them when it set itself down on the ground. Boy, I wonder if this is one of those floating towers, like what dropped rocks on that other town we were in. Interesting. As I get closer, can I uh, use my Arcana skill to see what kind of if it was magic or anything? Um, Arcana really requires either the use of magic being done in front of you or kind of hands-on. Uh, okay. As you get closer, though, you see the trees are smashed down. The top is a wizard's hat that crests this tower. It's not just shaped that way, it's painted that way. At first it looked like it was just a maybe blue stone, but when you get closer and closer, you see different shapes and symbols that are painted on the top of the tower. I could use Arcana for the symbols. 
It's sure. a flying wizard tower. Your dwarf friend probably tells you what you can gather. <laughs> yeah, it's a flying <laughs> wizard tower. It's full of wizards or some such. You guys gotta uh, stop rolling ones, man. Yep. <sighs> Inspiration, because I think I have one. You think you do? Well, it's marked on my thing. Okay. There you go. Okay. To land a tower on the ground, you definitely need some very, very powerful magic. And the way this thing is plopped down on the ground is if it fell from the sky and crushed the trees to the ground, um, set uh, itself are, deep into I, the swamp. You said there's some symbols on there. Can I? Oh, with that good a roll? They're just yeah. stars, moons, half moons. Nothing particular about them that makes sense to you. They look like decoration. It seems like a lot of things are falling from the skies these days. I may have... The wizards run afoul of the giant's flying castle. Should we check in, make sure they're all right? If you'd like. If uh, nothing else, hmm. we can at least tell them to watch out for other flying castles that may do them harm. <laughs> all right, come on. You. Let's go faster. <laughs> you move closer and closer. As you get closer, you can tell it's a hexagon shaped and it has four spokes that come out to the sides and the back. And they go up and down like a fin and there's an arch in between the tower and where the uh, prong of that fin lands in the ground as if it's kind of like a, a thruster of a rocket ship or something. You see... A what? It's not really. Just as an example. <laughs> I have never heard these words. You see I, that there's I, a smaller um, tower that's protruding from the side. It doesn't go all the way to the ground. It's kind of just as if it was glued onto the side or built into the side. It's just a little tiny tower about hey, look, 100 feet small high. Mage. It is like us. The one big one and the one small one. Mm, interesting. Uh, maybe we should just bypass this altogether. What do you think, Mr. Theodore? I mean, I was planning on, but sounds like everyone else wanted to uh, check it out. Uh, Mr. Carmen, maybe we can just bypass just this one. Listen, lad, you cannot bypass everything that shows up in the road of life. Sometimes you have to go and look and see what's what. I suppose you are right. And I, I slow my horse down because we're still on horse, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, I'll slow it down so I'm be like it, between you and uh, I got the the big mage behind me. <laughs> the sheer scale of this thing as you approach it dawns on you that it is hundreds of feet high. It's huge. It's probably about a hundred and some feet in diameter all the way around besides the, the finned spokes. It's even bigger with those, like if they're legs that come out of it or something. The door, as you get closer, is not directly in the path. It's kind of off in the swamp just a little. There is three stone steps that go up to this large protrusion that comes from the tower as if it's a vestibule that's built off the uh, side of that hexagon. And the door is huge. It's maybe 30 feet high. Oh, not for us. Time to go around. I think this is for giants. <sighs> Just like the small man said. Aye, but I don't know if we should be trying to kill any giants, really. There might be out of our league. Of I thought them, but... that's what he told us to do. Uh, well, he's a dragon. It's easy for him to kill giants. It's not so easy for us. Uh, I do not see any signs of the Mr. Folgoros was here. If it was a dragon, or if it was a giant, wouldn't he battle? Wouldn't he fight it? Mayhap that's why the tower didn't fly anymore. Oh. I guess we could always go to the door and look. And we'll knock on the door and see. 
Are there windows and stuff on the outside? There are windows at the very top of the tower, probably about 250 feet high. And they're large, open spaces. They're not like a paneled with glass. So they're big arches that are just built into the side of the tower. And the smaller tower that is protruding from its side has a couple large slits, which you could fit through easily, you think. But you'd have to get up there, and that's at least 120 feet high. Yeah, I was know. mostly looking to see if the windows were human-sized or if they were more giant-sized. Definitely they can have a big... bigger than human-sized. I mean, this okay. whole thing is on a scale of something different than you're used to. I don't know if we should go and take a look anymore. I think we should reconvene and have another talk about it. Or we can just bypass it uh, in all haste. <laughs> Sorry. Would you like uh, to continue north? Uh, what say you, Woodsman? Are you curious? I wanted to bypass it in the beginning, so. I so, you, but is, are you firmly in that comp or are you ambivalent? If anyone else wants to investigate, I'll bring up the rear. But uh, Do you feel about this tower the way our dwarf feels about the ocean? I would say it's comparable, yes. You, so I you know. are afraid of it? Listen, fuck you, man. I am not <laughs> afraid of the water. I just didn't like to swim. <laughs> I was going to argue, but I figured the dwarf would do it for me. and I, 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 am, right. I am cautious. That's what it is. I have short legs. I'm not a good doggy paddler. So, <laughs> fuck off. <laughs> Doors were not made for water. <sighs> All right. You guys are having an argument. You hear the sounds of what seems like steam propulsion from a train. Just... And it starts... From the ground up, and you see what looks like cloud matter forming beneath the tower, from the tower's uh, bottom that's kind of embedded itself into the ground. And this cloud stuff starts spreading outward in a wide, swathing range near, and it's like it's um, spoken out to you. The webs uh. of cloud matter are moving their way across the ground towards He can make a cloud everywhere. like me. Oh, fuck. I, I think can... it's time to go. I too can make clouds. It is not to be scared of. No, this cloud means it's going to fly. No, I make a cloud all the time and cannot fly. No, listen. The tower is going to fly <laughs> now. I think the tower's it's the face starts spinning. And the door that's kind of askew to the side, it starts spinning a door towards you. And you can now see the door directly in the path. You're maybe 120 feet away, 200 feet away. You're not. Oh, that's close. Well, you're close. <laughs> that's close. <laughs> <laughs> for for you, you know, my three friends. Up. And you see the door open it's huge ah. and the whole thing opens oh here we go doors do not open when they fly you are wrong again it opens outwards and you see a large hand push it open a giant hand push it open and this uh giant's hand is a pallid blue color hey this guy looks all right <laughs> I will get off the road and into the brush. <laughs> you run uh, into the brush. You see a bunch of um, sh very shallow steps form in the cloud matter towards your party. Just very, very shallow and long steps forming towards you. Almost I people die. I equip my shield. What does it mean that you are afraid of large blue men? I've been traveling with you for a week. Nay, listen, he dro they dropped rocks on a town and killed people where we come from. Who's they? <laughs> the, the giants that fly in the tower. They dropped rocks on people and killed them. 
The cloud and matter stole. is still coming towards you. It's um, now past your group in a very thin layer of cloud matter, and the steps are still forming towards you. Thum, 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 thum. The ranger takes off. He bolts into the brush. Ah. Get ready to use your magic, muscle mage. I pull out my hammer. Uh, are you sure we should enter a combat with um, a giant? They know we're here, and if the tower can fly, they can chase us down. Ooh. <laughs> there is only one thing that can be done. The song of greeting. I pull oh, the horn. Oh, don't blow the horn. Oh, sh shite. Oh, fuck. Oh, more to mistake. Mr. Mr. Tom, Mr. Tom, oh, calm, calm yourself. This... <laughs> Hello, large blue man. Okay. <laughs> you see this giant step outside the door. And he is just as eccentric as this tower is. He is dressed from head to toe in purple wizard robes with those same symbols, stars and half moons and other different kinds of shapes that are all embedded in his purple robes in the color of yellow. He, he is a giant wizard. This is what it feels like to be next to larger wizard. <laughs> no wonder small mage is so scared. <laughs> <laughs> He points at the horn blower, and you hear a voice inside your head as he points his finger towards you, and it's in a whisper, but the whisper of a giant. And he goes, Hello, small folk. Don't be afraid. I am not going to hurt you. I turn and I look look around excitedly at everyone else. He's our friend. You can also what? whisper back to him. What are you talking about? Like, I say, fear not. We shall also not hurt you. <laughs> Small folk. He points at the dwarf now. Please oh, don't be afraid. I nudge him in the ribs with my elbow. Eh, eh, you here? I can whisper back. You can whisper back. Have you been dropping rocks on people? <laughs> if you have, I'm plenty worried about what it is you might do. Small folk, why would you ever say this? Please, don't be afraid. I I would never do this. Small well, someone folk. Did. He in someone. individually points to each of you. He points to Arthur. And as he does this, he's slowly walking down the steps. Carefully, not running, not threateningly. Did he point to me as well? You're in the brush. <laughs> he doesn't okay. even see you. That's good. That's That was my intent, so... He didn't actively point me out. Got it. So, I'm like... Small Oi. folk, he says, as he points to Arthur. You hear it in your mind, and... Just having Arcana, you know he's definitely using magic. Simple magic. Where he can talk to you from range. Where did your friend go, small folk? Um, uh, are you talking about Jakad? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's fair. <laughs> sure. <laughs> if that's who ran away, I'm not here to hurt you, small folk. I lean into Tom, who's probably the closest to me since everybody else is hanging back, and I say, I didn't trust him. <laughs> That's awesome, because at the same time, when you lean in, I say, I trust him. <laughs> <laughs> I can't hear you. I can't hear what you're saying. You can't hear me? You can't hear me. Can anyone hear me? No, I you sound like you're cutting in and out to no, me. I can, I can hear him. That's just you, I can Josh. hear him fine. Oh, that must be just me. Just uh, okay. Okay, I say, wait. I trust him. That's what you say is you trust him? Yeah. I'm like, I, didn't, in. I didn't trust him. And you're like, like, I, I trust, trust him. him. I start He's, shaking my head at you. He slowly strolls down these long, shallow cloud steps. 
And with each step he takes, he places this giant staff as tall as him, 18 feet high, into the cloud matter as if it's a walking stick. Thump. Thump. And each time he sets it into the cloud, you see a little puff of cloud spray go up. When he gets closer, he stops pointing at people and using magic. Please, small folk, my name is Zephyros. I mean you no harm. Zephyros. Well, some of your folk been dropping rocks on people. Hey, hey, do not be impolite. Let's offer him some... uh, I don't think we have any ale. My name is Mr. Thomas. That's what this small one calls me. So let's... I am also meaning you no harm. Mr. Thomas, it's it's great to meet you, small folks. I knew that you were all right because you were large and blue. It is something that is very close to my heart. When you, it's when he actually gets closer, close to my skin. You see that he has white, wispy hair that kind of sprays off his pallid blue face. He has a very long face, and he has a long, white, wispy beard. The hair and the beard is almost as if it's made out of cloud matter, kind of spraying downwards and outwards, and very translucent. It almost looks like it doesn't belong there. Very odd looking. I feel like you made this NPC for me, and that makes me feel so happy. <laughs> I really <laughs> did. <laughs> yeah. Oh. So why why are you parking here in the middle of the road? I I had an accident, small folk. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. Perhaps uh, that sounds messy. <laughs> Do I step in his accident while I'm in the brush? <laughs> no kidding. Stay away from his accident. <laughs> I lost consciousness and I ended up here. I did not mean to land here. I was just on my way north. Um, <gasps> I, I've seen are, you. I've seen you on the way north. and you. He interrupts you as you're talking. He just keeps talking over you, and it's very easy for him to do because his voice is booming. You've seen this? In a in a vision, small folk. Oh. It was you that I've seen. That is what visions do. You see them. Yes. My magical journeys have taken me far and wide across Faerun. And it's brought you me here. You are more here. tall than wide. Thank you, he says. And he is very lanky, very thin man. He's not bulky and muscly like you are. Thin giant. He's not a man. <laughs> he gets to the last step that was formed, and you see him make a little motion with his hands, and you can feel this gust of wind kind of raise the clouds up into more of a uh, large step for him to sit on. But when he sits, his knees are very high, and he's sitting with his knees up and his arms around his knees looking down at you. Three. Oh, you, well, what, what kind of, uh, what were you heading north for? I document the regions around Faerun. I make notations about the different people, the creatures, the areas. And, and this vision, were we in the north already? Were we successful to be going up there? I've seen you in the maelstrom. Uh, do, what's, a, what's a maelstrom? Yes. <laughs> he smiles big. Well, let me tell you, small folk. What was your name? Dwarf. Uh, I tell, oh, him. The very small folk. <laughs> I am Carmen Borofound. And I have questions for you, giant. But the first is, what the fuck is a Malastorm? 
a maelstrom. The maelstrom. It's where the storm giants reside. It's their home. It's where King Hecaton lives or lived. It's... King, King Hecaton? It's their home. You I say am they not a storm are... giant. That is not where I come from. But I've seen you there. He kind of scooches his butt a little closer than he does. You see like cloud matter going just everywhere. Uh, did you just say that we were... Um, in a city with with storm giants. That's what I saw. Why through my magics. There? I think it's you who's gonna save my kind. Who's gonna bring order back to the world. It's See, you. I told you this guy was alright. <laughs> he already knows we are heroes. You are heroes. <laughs> yes, I will follow you forever. <laughs> and um, exactly how are we going to be saving you? What was your name? Uh, my name is Arthur Emerson. Arthur. Sir. Arthur. I'm pleased to see you, to see you in the flesh and blood, not just of these visions. I believe you will restore the ordinate to its greater glory. Oh, the ordinate? Uh, I've been, I've been searching for the ordinate for quite some time now. The ordinate. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure what it is, and uh, and I have this letter here, and I pull out the letter, and I open it up, and it's, I, and I should kind of raise it up in the air to him. It's a, it's from a dear friend of mine, and. He wrote on it, who controls the ordinary? You raise it up to him and he bends his head very far forward. His head is um, larger than you almost in full height. And he's staring down at your very, very tiny piece of parchment. Who controls the ordinary? Well, that that's a great question. I don't know if I can answer that right now. Can you, I can you, can you tell me what the ordering is? Yes, the ordering is the set of rules, the fibers that bind the giants to order, that help us control everything in this world, our passions, our urges. The ordering was created by the great father Anam, our god, our giant god. He is was great, is great. And the ordinating was passed down to King Hecaton. And King Hecaton kept order in the lands, kept order through the maelstrom, through the throne that he controlled. That was King Hecaton, you said. King and Hecaton. I'm like, and I'm like writing all this down. I'm like sitting down on the ground with my pen and pad, just going. Doo -doo 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 -doo. I have been using magic to try to figure out a way to restore the ordering, to restore order to the giants, to all of our societies. And in that I've seen you, and you and you, and the other one that ran away. Little one! He starts shouting, come out! Steve. And when he shouts, you guys have to actually like hold your hands against your ears. It's so loud. It's booming. He hasn't done anything threatening against anyone else, so I'll, I'll come out. No, he hasn't Stay killed anyone else. Come on back, Mr. Teddy. He will not do harm to your little body. The fourth small folk, he says, as you approach from the brush. And what was your name? My name is Theodore. Please come. Come talk. Come hang out. Come see everything. Do you want to see the world? Can we go inside your house? Please. Hey, uh, first I have a question for you. Please. Do you know why 
Giants dropped rocks on Nightstone and stole their stone. Nightstone, Nightstone. You see him reach into this big pocket in his robes, and he pulls out a massive tome. It's huge. It's um, maybe about four feet high and a couple feet wide. And he starts thumbing through all these pieces of, uh, all these pages in this book, this parchment, he shuffles it, it's loud, it's crashing, it sounds maybe like thunder, until he scrolls with his finger down one page of the book and thump, points at that part. Nightstone. What happened to Nightstone? That's not ah. too far from Waterdeep. Flying uh, towers on clouds, much like your own, I, I would I would guess, flew over and dropped rocks on the town, killing people and driving the rest away. And then they went down and stole their magic stone no, from the no, middle of the no, town. No, no, no. I they did. people. No. Listen, this can't be right. I didn't know if they're your people or not, but they were giants and flying towers, and that looks suspiciously like a flying tower, and you look suspiciously like a giant, sir. Uh, so, Mr. Mr. Carmen, Mr. Carmen, uh, perhaps we shouldn't accuse him. Uh, well, I'm not accusing that. him, but I'm asking him if he knows why people much like him and a tower much like his may have dropped stones in a town and killed folk and took their magic stone. Killed small folk? Aye. No. Killed the lady who... Ran the town. It obviously wasn't him. Nay, but maybe it's someone he knows. Maybe a cousin that, or a neighbor. That is like seeing perhaps a, a halfling that is halfway across the world did bad thing and they want to know from you why it was done. I'm not There's, a halfling. If, I'm not he, a halfling. To no. him, he may, may not cannot tell the difference. Just like you cannot tell the difference between just, all uh, the other fires. A question. I'm asking huh? him the question. He can see visions may happen. He can find out. I would like to know. That's that's terrible. That, I, Aye, it was terrible. That breaks my heart to oh, hear. I it broke people. <laughs> I will see if I can find out. Thank you much. Please come in. I, it's just me in here. And and my griffins. Oh. I I like griffins. Griffins. They've made and their it, home in the tower in the airy. If you can answer my question, I can answer a question you don't know you want to ask yet. I have news for you. What? You have news for you knew me? I don't know you. I have news for you. Have you seen me? I've no, seen you. I have not seen you. I see I you right now. But I know someone who you do not want to see who is flying around these areas where you might decide to fly your castle. Clouth. Pardon me? Clouth? We need to avoid Clouth. No, uh, not, old snarl. not Clouth. Old Snarl. The Clouth. We just heard about him. Fogros. 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 He pulls out that tome again from his pocket and he starts flipping through pages. <laughs> He's a halfling. <laughs> he flips all the way through to the, maybe the midway point of the book, scrolling down the page. I don't have any... Tell me about this. How, how do you spell that again as you are naming it off? I don't know. Ask the mage. He starts writing down what you're telling him. What is he Fogros like? Is, He's a dragon. He shoots lightning from his mouth. He is the color of metal, burnished metal. And he told us to kill all the giants we come across. So, I mean, I'm not necessarily keen for trying to kill people that haven't earned it, but he'll probably try and kill you if he sees you. You should steer clear of him. He's scribbling furiously in his book as you're telling him all this. That's amazing. What else do you know? Anything else you can tell me? I just know that he didn't like you. And that you better stay hidden. He doesn't like Zephyros. Sorry, you he guys are cutting like out again. Giant. He doesn't like Zephyros. No, no, he just hates all the giants for some reason that I do not understand. He says giants hate dragons, 
and dragons hate giants much like dwarves and orcs hate each other. Hate's such a strong word. Aye, it is, but I'm... I think it is, uh, the right one. He's, uh, stroking his wispy cloud beard, and you see him pull, <laughs> like, 30 hairs out of the same time. And then when he lets them go, they just float back up and plant themselves on his chin again. Oh, Weird. <laughs> well, what is wrong with your beard? <laughs> What's wrong with my beard? My beard isn't... There's nothing wrong. Does anything live in there? Uh, what? Well, I, I live prop, in here. A proper beard does not... Is is a home, a home for friends. What? <laughs> I look at Tom. I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about, Tom? Beards are not homes. <laughs> I, I mean, that's that's where Andromeda lives. <clears throat> what? You have someone loving in your beard? And I, I can't believe you've not been paying attention. And I get real close to him, put my face next to his, and then I lift my chin up and I part the beard so that there's eight big tarantula eyes looking out from what right at my neck <laughs> why the fuck do you have a tarantula in your beard he gets really it's close old. to you as well and he uh holds out his hand may i <laughs> his uh, fingertip like to... is like really large maybe <laughs> i don't even know the scale probably about eight inches in diameter each fingertip and he holds his giant hand up to your face like he wants to, to hold. hold. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I can scurry out of And he delicately places the end of his finger right near your face, and when he pushes against you, there is a strength that you are not even used to. You're very strong, and it, just, it pushes you by accident a little hard. <laughs> You're a big boy. The tarantula slowly creeps its way down your beard, through the hairs, and onto his fingertip. And it looks like a little ant to our fingertips. And it slowly crawls up. He pulls it close to his face. Moves his hand around. He's just ogling it. What is its name? That is Andromeda. She... Has been she, with me for many, many years now. She's beautiful. I think so as well. Though I am not normally the one who likes so many eyes. He puts his hand <laughs> back down and sets the tarantula on the ground. Because he doesn't know how to do it without hurting you. Yeah, I just kind of call her back and she comes and scurries up please come in come in please he you sits sit up i bet your castle could fly us to our our goal location much faster than we could walk there where are you going um we're going all the way up to the somewhere we're going to Bryn Shander. that place Bryn Shander, and he scrolls right. through his book again. I think, I think, from what I gather, it's right near that uh, the cloth place that you were mentioning. Oh, oh, oh. So you probably have to be kind of careful if you are afraid of him. I and Fogros is on the loose. I didn't think we want to be in a flying castle with a giant if Fogros shows up. Um, but he, but he could save us many weeks, many many weeks. <laughs> Only if we didn't die. Well, I suggest not dying. I won't hurt you. See? This shall be easy. I didn't you... think you'll hurt us. I think that if Fogros comes across us with you, he may hurt all of us. Very no, The dragon told us to kill, kill all giants. with any giants. Kill. But he, he, said but kill. he obviously did not mean large blue magical giants. Aye, he meant all. All giants. All <laughs> giants. Well, this being the first one I have met, I think perhaps your small Irish halfling is not very stained in the head. He's not a halfling, he's a dragon. <laughs> so he says. I swear to God. Swear to Morden. Why would I believe that? 
Besides, oh. we. Besides, I think maybe. I mean, he's. If let's say your magical halfling is perhaps a dragon, also too in his spare time, he seemed like a pretty decent fellow with many drinks of the ale. And perhaps if we sat him down and had some more drinks of ale with our new friend, then maybe he would no longer think that you kill all giants. Hi, right, what do you think, Woodsman? See, <laughs> I am so I think convinced. We're supposed to leave this uh and travel by foot i i oh, her. that sounds like you're just appealing to maintain your position of authority so that you have a, some level of control over us control Feel is free. one of the things that is very useful to have yes perhaps we give it over and we fly in a magic castle <laughs> Re remember new things you were just saying a couple days ago uh, other small man to the small wizard, the small mage saying that he needed to try new new ales. It was important. You cannot go around every what what was the words? You cannot go around everything in life. Sometimes I, you need to walk through it. And we sign it and we're done. I have I have maybe to be making a list of things that we should do. And flying in Magic Castle is the only thing so far on that list. We're still going to fly in Magic Castle. He said he saw us in a magic town flying with the cloud giants in the Malastorm. No, and so... no. That's not my people. The Malastorm. Oh. It's the storm Wait. giants. Oh, aren't you a giant? A st <laughs> I am a giant. I am a he cloud, a cloud giant. giant. Oh, sorry, my bad. That's about as similar as perhaps a halfling and a dwarf. It's Both more short. like a that shield is... dwarf and a hill dwarf. A oh, mountain dwarf, hill dwarf, they're different. So, what do you say? I bet um, he has very good food as well. He hadn't even said that he'd give us a ride. Please don't give us a ride. Sir. Do you have a bathhouse? I house? would give you a ride. Do of you course have a I'd place give to you take a ride. I would not want to let the the heroes that are going to save my folk, that are <sighs> going to restore the ordning away. I bet you have an excellent bath in there, do you not? I could make a bath. <sighs> Does it smell like old fish and bad food? No. <laughs> then sign up this guy <laughs> who has two thumbs and is going with you <laughs> this guy <laughs> come on come on I can't I give you a ride the whole way I would not want to be caught in the cloth and veil but you you would be willing to give us a, a rather substantial shortcut yes we go over the ocean <gasps> this sounds oh, magic. fuck no. I did not want to go over the water. We're not going <laughs> in the water. We fly fastest. It's a straight line from here. I'll take you all the way to the coast up by fire share. That will save us hundreds and hundreds of miles. Yes, yes, Mr. Carmen. Maybe, uh... Maybe you we can, should follow him. You can return. You can return your ring to uh, the 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 Morak fellow much sooner. He much pulls less out likely. another book and he's fingering through it. Um, this one looks a lot more decorated. It has all those same kinds of symbols that adorn his robes and the uh, wizard's hat that crests the top of the tower. And on this, it looks like it's bound in a leather. And it's been painted purple and yellow just like everything else. He's thumbing through all the pages. But you can just tell, Arthur, this is his spell book. It's huge, but it's his spell book. <laughs> oh, oh, boy. You so want to look at that book. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yes, uh, Mr. Carmen, let's just uh, head inside and... I believe Mr. Selfbros has much to teach us. And, uh... Woodsman, what say you? 
I believe it to be a bad idea, but if everyone is for it, then I will follow. All right, but listen, you big blue galoot, and now I'm pointing at Thomas. <laughs> he, he looks down and says, what? Oh. Not you, the other one. If we fall in the water and I drown, I'll haunt you for the rest of my fucking own life. I swear to gods. Morden, on his fiery red beard, if I die in the water, you'll never know a moment of peace. <laughs> That sounds very nice to me. You will be my friend forever. <laughs> Come on. Oh, I fucking hate this idea. As I walk up the stairs. <laughs> you yes. walk up these long, shallow cloud steps. And the first step you take onto this cloud matter is a little awkward. When you step down and it uh, impresses as if it's a, a peat box <laughs> topping or something. It's very soft and you almost fall in and through but then it catches you a couple inches down in and Ugh. as you continue on you slowly walk towards the front door he strides pat <coughs> sorry he strides further towards the tower in long steps when he gets to the door, he opens it, and you can see there's a giant crack that's through the front door, and he starts casting some kind of spell as he has his hand placed on the front of this large oaken door. By the time he's almost done casting the spell, you get there. Because he's there in a matter of seconds compared to you. And... As his magic completes, you see that crack in the entirety of the door start mending itself from the top down as if it's being erased. This Does he have the yeah. same limitations on uh, the size that he can mend? <laughs> yeah, he can only mend one, <laughs> one foot worth of material at a time. <laughs> it slowly mends itself. <laughs> <laughs> and you walk through the door into Zephyros' tower. And it is at a scale of a giant, just like you would think. And actually, I got a map for you. Mm, I'm very excited to be seeing the inside of this tower. Here you go. Oh, look at that detail. <laughs> oh, my God. I won. What a beautiful tower. <laughs> <laughs> okay, everyone see that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. so you step to the inside of the first floor. It and looks like it's not a twitch. I don't know if you meant it to be. It is now. Thank you. And it's pretty wide open. There's a little bit of furniture, but he keeps it very clean, pristine. The stonework is immaculate, and it looks like it's mostly held together with magic. <clears throat> this is your haven, Arthur. This place is amazing. He's got a large purple curtain that hangs against the back wall, and... <clears throat> Sorry. There you go. Let's see. And you see up above a second floor. He steps to the center of the room approximately from the front door. He's like, come, I'll show you the bath. And he just starts raising up into the air when he steps into this approximation of uh, this circle <laughs> that you see on the map. It just starts... Lifting him up and up and up. I, I do not know the way to be flying. Just step right there, he says as he's going up towards the second floor, which is almost a hundred feet high. <laughs> oh man! Oh, I I run. <laughs> you run, and you can feel when you get to that point where the mass of your body is lifted and you can slowly lift up and you know if you go further you'll step out of this bounds and you fall 
Yeah, yeah, I stay in the middle. <laughs> Good call. You stay in the middle of this tower, and everything on the inside is made of immaculate white stone. It's very bright in here. The only thing that dampens the brightness is the uh, furniture, the purples, the yellows, the colors of everything but the stone. And Thomas you... says banter. <laughs> when you get to the second floor, it's just a hole that's cut in the ground, and there's no way for you to move horizontally when you get up here. He reaches out and holds out his hand so you could step onto it. Mm-hmm. Pretty nice. Because <laughs> there'd be no yeah. other way for you to like move your momentum to the left or right. All you're doing is levitating straight up into the air. <laughs> I can I can cast the gust cantrip and push myself, right? Maybe. Maybe. I guess no one's ever taken gust, because who takes that spell? Except for Zephyr. Uh, You've seen him move, do that. Yeah, one medium or smaller creature that you choose must succeed on a strength saving throw or be pushed up to five feet away from you. So, But if I'm hovering and I cast it, would that scoop me the opposite direction? One medium creature, can it be you? And it says, it doesn't specifically say so. I think it probably works. Why not? Rule while, cool. While I'm, wait, while I'm weightless and levitating, Gust sure. could move me five feet. <laughs> you could move yourself since you have Gust. Yeah, I'll, I'll still launch myself into his hand. You land in his hand, and as he moves, it's quick. Roll a deck save. Um. <laughs> He's gonna grab you afterwards. Squish. Let's see. Uh, you're able to maintain your balance as he moves his hand. His fingers don't stay perfectly flat and kind of move themselves, and you almost fall on your butt in his hand. But you are taken on a ride to the side, and he sets you down on the ground. <laughs> This is my room. I I... peek into the hole and see if anyone else is following me. Nope. (laughs) Not yet. (laughs) Son of a bitch. What about you, Thomas? (laughs) I'm looking up Uh, and waiting for your blood curdling screams. (laughs) Yeah, I'm doing the same. So you're going to just wait? Yep. Uh, Come on, small mage. You do not have a reason to be afraid. Small mage? Are you down there? I think he said be right back. Yeah, he's doing he's, something. He's um, investigating the lower level of the tower. And it's pretty far down. You'd have to shout really loud. I shouldn't tell you Small that. Small mage! <laughs> I guess I don't want him to die alone. So I, I take a deep breath. And I step onto the floating thing. Oh. You step into the area and you feel your body become weightless as you start lifting up. As if you are underwater. The buoyancy is pulling everything upward. Your beard starts to flip a little upward as well. As if it's being pulled. I hold it down. I tuck it into my belt. (laughs) And you... Get up there where Zephyros helps, plucks you out of the air, thump, as gently as he can, and sets you on the ground. Thump. Oh, man, that said he's back. Small mage. How do we back. get? How do we get back down? You just step off right here, he says, and he points to the northern edge of this circle that's cut into the second floor, and uh, you will fall slowly. That is. Amazing. How do you make your magic be how do you make your magic be long lasting? I never learned that magics. It's it takes many years to do that. Many, many years, many years. Maybe a hundred or so. It's taken me a long time to make this tower. I oh. made it from scratch. You scratch it? You can't scratch it. It's magic. Uh, how how did you lose consciousness earlier? What happened to you that made you lose consciousness? 
I was using my magic, and well, do you know much about magic? Nah. <laughs> I happen to be the premier magician in the whole world. Then you would know. I was trying to speak to the old dead gods, the old gods of the giants, to someone that can give me answers to what this ordaining being broken is all about, why it happened, how I can fix it. Yes, I'd... yes. You, the ordaining. I'm still having a tough time grabbing the concept of the ordaining. The ordaining. It is... Listen to letters. They say ordaining. O-R-D-N-I-N-G. Ordaining. And uh, is it just a, a force that controls everything, or is it a is it a group of people or giants or i yes and yes yes <laughs> yes <laughs> so fun so the ordaining is made by anum and it's held together by hecaton you see yes. and he pulls a letter off his nightstand that's sitting by his gigantic bed and this letter is huge. You could, you could probably use it for like a tent or something that's so large. I received a letter from Princess Sarissa. Here. And he puts it down on the ground in front of you. And it's like a large area rug to you. And it has um, some very nice calligraphic handwriting from the top to bottom. It's a letter from Sarissa. And she's a princess? Princess Sarissa. Does anyone... We have already established no one has history, right? Nope. No. What okay. about currency? What? That was a joke in game about history versus currency. Uh, so can Money. I... Can I go on the, the sheet of paper? Yeah, and if you step on the sheet of paper and walk the lines, it's like you have to take full steps to get across the letter. Am I able to even, like, read it that much just because it's so giant? Uh, yeah, you could read it slowly. So I'll just kind of walk across the words and 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 read it while he talks. Okay, glad I didn't prepare a letter. <laughs> mm -hmm. I'll give it the outlines, though. It says, To all my brethren, Princess Sarissa, and then it continues on. I ask that you come join me in the maelstrom. King Hecaton has disappeared, and there is much to discuss. I ask that you join me as soon as you're able. Please, we need your help. The ordning has been shattered. My mother has been murdered. I have now oh. taken control of the throne. Please, oh, we need all your help. With Hecaton gone, the chaos that is spreading across Faerun is a terrible thing to see. We need some way to restore the ordning. We need to find King Hecaton. I plead with everything I have, please. And it's signed, uh, Princess Sarissa. She wrote this to more than just me, Zephyro says. I want to help her. I don't know how, but I've seen you, and I've been asking. And I want to help you get to where you need to be. Yes, so when you say that the ordinance has been shattered... She uh, said that. I'm I guess still, I said is, that too. Is it? Does it mean it was an object that was controlling a force? No, it's like a contract. Grouping. King Hecaton held it together. And he's missing. Do we know where last King Hecaton was? 
the maelstrom. That's where he lives. I know that my step in this journey is to get you where you need to go. I've seen that much, and there's much more to ask. Unfortunately, I can't do it too often. And using this magic can, well, you've seen the effects of that. You've seen what happens. What do you mean? He falls. I sometimes lose control when I use this spell. Mm, I kind of grimly nod. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know all about that. <laughs> when when I use this magic, it can make my mind snap. As if I'm no longer here, or I'm no longer me, or I don't know who I am, or who you are. That didn't make any sense. It's hard to explain. It's powerful magic. So, maybe, uh, maybe we should skip going to the north and maybe just go straight to the Maelstrom. Would you be able to take us there? No, I can't take you to the Maelstrom. It's at the bottom of the ocean. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> I just said I can't <laughs> take you there. The the it's all right, small folk. He kind of... Almost taps your shoulder and thinks better of it. <laughs> it's going to crush me. <laughs> I'm like, no, I will know be going to the bottom of the ocean. I will not take happen. you there. Good. I kind of go there. It will not happen. Would they accept us at the Maelstrom if we went? No, they're dragons. I mean, they're giants. He gets a little furl of his brows, his wispy cloud brows furl a little. Princess Sarissa, she's a good woman, a good giant. I oh. have met her a few times at the Maelstrom, and I think she has the best at heart for small folk, just like her mother did. Her mother was very revered among the small folk, and she treated them with respect. Well, then who's be dropping rocks on people? That's what I want to know. And I said I would try to figure that out for you. I uh, you did. And I will. <laughs> I don't know who. It's terrible news. Just terrible. I... I hate to think of that. <laughs> but I'll take you to the coast. I'll get you as far as I can. And on our journey, I'll try to figure this out. I'll do what I can. All right. Just do not crash your tower in the ocean, please. It wouldn't crash in the ocean. It would float. Oh, that's good. Uh, floating is good. When I am stronger in my magic, I will make it so you can be a floater, too. Uh, <laughs> thank, thank you. <laughs> he will float like airy turd. Uh, yeah, uh, that's what I want. I didn't want to sink. <laughs> My stubby legs are no good at swimming. Perhaps we will give you longer legs then. <laughs> nay, I just want to stay on land. <laughs> Doors were made for the earth, not the water. <sighs> yeah. Well, I for one am excited that our new friend Zephyros has offered us a trip all the way up to the northern part of the coast. I... Though I must say, it will be... It will be strange. I Part of me likes to be, you know, walking so that I understand exactly where I am. This will be feeling very new. You can walk around on the outside. He points out the door, and you see the cloud stuff has formed um, like 50 feet in each direction from the tower. And it oh. looks like a solid ground. Well, a solid cloud ground. This is great. 
I run outside. Oh, <laughs> wait. Good wait, Lord. I'm on the second floor. Not right now. <laughs> <laughs> but on the second floor, that little small tower has some uh, slits, that tower that was built into it. And you can look out the slitted windows below, and you see the cloud oh. floor. Oh, yeah. You oh, also you have... see this giant orb about seven feet in diameter that's floating from the ground it's just hanging in midair it looks like a little planet emitting a soft aura of yellow light oh just hanging out in the middle of that tower yep just Uh. in the middle as if it's being held aloft with magic which it probably is i don't want to sound presumptuous as i I say (laughs) while staring at the orb but where are we going to be sleeping? <laughs> I can make up some straw beds from the airy. I'm that sure sounds... they can sacrifice some uh, of their straw. How soft and squishy can your clouds be? He smiles big. Very. Okay, I, now a, a I'm two sides what of you're the question. thinking. Can you make can you, can yes. they also be not so soft and squishy that we don't fall through them? Yes. <laughs> Very good. I will take one of those beds. This is something I can do. Garmin, do you also want to sleep on the clouds? Uh, it can no be thing, inside. Yeah. Oh yeah, inside is better. I didn't want to sleep outside. Mm. All right. Well, then we can do it inside, too. Yes, perhaps in the the area. Is that what you called it? The sleeping area? What? Nah. Listen, we didn't want to sleep with the griffins. Uh, we would rather sleep... Yeah, the area is where the griffins are. That's where he keeps his beasties. Oh, I, I would like to meet them. Oh, sure you would. They're not always friendly. Yeah, Wait, how, many, how many griffins do you have? Four. Oh, and do one you has a d- nest, a does, little clutchling of well, do, eggs. I, I elbow down at, at the dwarf. Hey, does your race smell destiny much like mine does? Four griffins. Four of us. Nay, we will not be riding the griffins. So you do not smell destiny. <laughs> I, no, I smell disaster all over the shite. <laughs> That's what it is. It's a shite idea, Tom. You're a good lad, but uh, no, no griffins. Well, I would like to meet them at some point. I, I wouldn't suggest it, but you can. Just, I should be there if you do. Okay. That sounds like an even pair. Also, why do you have a planet flying in your room? Oh, that <laughs> that's my navigator. He goes no. over and he puts his hands around it and um, it emits a soft, bright light. And when he does, you see the world start forming in different shapes around this entirety of this uh, globe. And you can see the coastline start to shape and... If you get close enough, it's actually pretty large here. Like I said, it's seven feet in diameter. So when you get close, you see his fingers um, impress on the coastline of where you are. And he slides his finger up to the northern coast. And you feel the whole tower jerk as it takes off real quick. Not hard enough to make you fall, but just enough to make you realize it's moving. Oh, oh, we are doing it. Mm. This is how I control this. Mm-hmm. That's amazing. Hmm. Hey. Here he shows you like a little different section where he slides his finger up. This is how I go higher. And he slides his finger from the bottom to the top. <gasps> and you can feel the tower now starting to lift off from the ground and up. Oh, I'm this getting a little is, around the gills. I'm like, oh. This is going to be so many amazing. <laughs> He just smiles. And, oh. I wonder what the small ones are doing downstairs. <laughs> I bet they are very surprised. <laughs> Nobody <laughs> told them what's happening because they were too chicken to come up. 
Arthur, are you still downstairs? Uh, with Theodore? Yeah. Probably, okay. yeah. So you feel this jerk, and you look outside, and the tower starts lifting up and off the ground. And the clouds of stuff that was, like, spindled hundreds of feet out starts to retract, like webbings being burned away into this solid cloud area around the tower. Oh, goodness, Mr. Theodore. You must be leaving now. Yes, it appears so. <laughs> they are sulking. <laughs> <laughs> and there's other, uh, there's a large chair at the table, but there's other furniture and portraits around this that are very interesting to look at inside this tower. There's uh, different diagrams and symbols, some which might be arcane symbols. You could get an idea of this giant Zephyros's area of studies if you spent some time looking at all the different diagrams and things he's drawn. Hmm. And the tower what are these takes off into the air. Things? Those are Those... giant light orbs that brighten the area. And it looks like they're not actually fire. They're just light. If you go up yeah, and I'm touch one, gonna... you, it turns off. Boom. Hmm. And if you touch it again, it turns back on. And they're held in place on a little tiny pedestal on the ground. This is this is quite the quite the tower. Yes, not my particular taste, but I suppose you would rather be on the ground and in the woods. What I'm used to, and yes, <laughs> there's no favorite terrain sky for you. No. Nope. <laughs> I'm sure this won't take long. Hopefully we'll be not. Back, we'll be back on the ground before you know it. So normally, it would take you about a month and a few days from here to get to Bryn Shander. Mm -hmm. It's going to take you about two weeks. It'll cut the time in half. Okay. To get to, well, it'll be a little less. About a week and a few days to get to the coastline. Because he's not going to take you all the way, he said. Right. He did not want to go through the Clouth and Vale. <clears throat> and you start moving through the air at a constant speed. He has a, a small larder with different foodstuffs. And his foodstuffs are gigantic. So he'll break it down for you on the table if you want. You'd have to like climb up and sit on the table to join him for meals because it's pretty tall. You couldn't even stand and see the top of the table. Mm, Mr. Zephyros, you have been the most kindest host. I am very much unhappy with this. I'm happy to. He smiles and he takes a big bite of whatever he's eating. <laughs> Some kind of meat stuff, and it looks like this must have been a large beast at one time. They uh, salted and preserved. So I'm going to try to find out from him why dragons and giants don't like each other. I know why. Would you like to hear my theory? It is because when giants build their towers, there is no bathrooms. There is a bathroom. Boy, I wish you had told me that earlier. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> I used your levitation tube tunnel, and part of it went up, part of it went down. Hmm. He can't press the digitation on anything he sees that looks unclean <laughs> and whisks the uh, soiledness away. It I'll was an interesting experiment. When we're done with food. Bathroom oh. talk is not for food. This is dinner time. So, <laughs> is he gonna tell so why do giants and dragons hate each other again? I do not understand. They've been at odds for centuries. It's an old grudge, an old, old war. 
We've never been... <sighs> dragons. We've never been really allies of each other. And just like dragons, there's good ones and there's bad ones. It's like giants. Well, you mean giants? There's bad giants. Of course there's bad giants. Just like there's Whoa. bad dwarves. Which giants are bad? Or blue men, like him. Every race has their apples that fell a little too far from the tree. Sure, but I think some dragons are bad and that it's like it has to do with their color, sort of. Like, you know, some dragons are more bad than other dragons by type. I think that's from their lineage, from the way they were created. Which is a little Art. different than giants. Giants weren't created bad or good. The giants that choose bad are bad. But they've chosen so, it. So the giants that dropped the rocks in the town, they were the bad giants, but they chose to be bad. I guess I couldn't answer that question. I don't know what happened. Are all cloud... Are all giants that fly on clouds cloud giants, or do storm giants also fly on clouds with their citadels and stuff? No, the storm giants reside in the maelstrom. Oh, so the giants that did drop the rocks, if they were on flying castles like this one, they were cloud giants. Yes. He looks a all little right. upset about that. Does this have anything to do with the ordinary being shattered? Maybe the giants are very close to their gods, to their god Anam. Do I know anything about Anam? I've got religion. Ah, uh, you can roll it. Oh, okay. can I roll it as well? Do you have religion? I do. I should have had history. I failed my roll horribly. Religion. Can I have advantage if he's helping me? You could use your inspiration too, but I, he was, it sounded no, like he was rolling on his own. Okay. Well, he knows. I don't. Anam, uh, much like your god, is named the All-Father as well. And he is the main giant deity. The great creator. But, well, I guess... Oh yeah, these are things you might know. It's been said the giants didn't... weren't native to Faerun. No one knows for sure, but some people think that they came from a different plane or a different place entirely. But that's always made them kind of foreign to this land. And Anam is who they look to in everything. And as far as you know, he's not an evil deity. He's much like more than a creator. The creator of worlds. Do you share your knowledge, Art? Yeah. Oh, as far uh, as you yeah, know, Carbon, he's the giant god. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I repeat. You repeat, repeat the what? I repeat all the information I know about Ednan. Okay. I must have missed it. We were uh, talking yes, well, about Anam, our Anam. god, the giant's god. He's a rather big fellow. Yes. So, if you're using magic to talk to elder gods, why do you not talk to Anam? Why do you try to talk to others if he is your main god? With the ordinary god, I haven't been able to successfully talk to him. Mm. With the shattering. Is it a rock? Is what a rock? The ordning, is it a rock? Oh, I feel like you haven't been listening. <laughs> 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 now, worshipping a magic rock, I could see the sense in that. The ordning is a set of principles, a something that ties us together. Rules? You have laws. Rules you mean like a law? Laws. Yes. Laws are good. It's what keeps us connected to the All Father. 
Your Hecaton laws keep you connected what? to your deity. Yes. Oh, and Hecaton was supposed to be the person that made sure everyone obeyed the laws. Yes. But now he's not there anymore. Yes. Ah, uh, okay. So now cloud giants are dropping rocks on people and stealing their magic rocks. Because there's no laws that people are making you have to do. We can still choose to be good. <laughs> I, I oh, will I find out what happened. I know you keep saying it. I'll find out what happened. He looks a little All silent. Right. And is there a way you can be contact in contact with us if you find anything out? I'm going to do it now on our trip. <laughs> we will be living with him oh, yeah, for, for the like next a, week. like two weeks or something, a week or something, yeah. I will I... let you know. I won't be able to do it again until we get closer. I have to um, rest for a while. Hey, oh, yeah, rest yourself. It's good. Yes, yes. Um, maybe on our journey, uh, you could. We could study together. What do you <laughs> study? Uh. Well, everything. He has a magic book and he wants to put your spells in his magic book, probably. <laughs> his <laughs> eyes kind of twinkle and light up and you see the uh, very whites of his eyes. And they're mostly white with very large um, grayed out pupils. <gasps> Are you a wizard? Uh, I, that's what I said. He has a magic book. Wait, now I feel like you haven't been paying any attention. Of course, we're all wizards. <laughs> Nay, I'm no wizard. I do not cast wizard spells. I cast cleric spells. He looks down oh, at whatever. the blue man and the little mage. Are you both wizards? Hey, yeah, I try you... to I try to stand where Thomas can't see me, and I like point at him and make the slashing motion across my neck. <laughs> <laughs> he kills me right to now. die. <laughs> <laughs> I, no, <laughs> no. I'm just like I point at him, and I'm like, no, no. I'm doing the no thing. Like, no, no. He's not a wizard. But I'm trying to do it, like from behind Thomas, so Thomas can't see me doing the thing. He goes, "That's amazing." Um, yes, I would love to study with you both. Hmm. Right. <laughs> well, the... I cast gust. To show my power. And I blow <laughs> Carmen's beard back. What? You blow my beard back? Mm-hmm. Listen, leave my beard out of this. <laughs> yes, yes, Mr. Zephyros. I'm, I, 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 pr I practice magic. Uh, recently, I've decided to uh, specialize in evocation. So you, you're you all um, at the table where you're eating. He's kind of um, in the middle of a bite, and he pulls out his large book, his wizard spells book, and slaps it on the table. It does it gently, but it's loud. And it vibrates the table. No one falls off or anything, but it's loud. And he starts flipping through. He's like, anything you want. Oh, art. This is your moment. No, this is what you've been waiting for. Yeah, yes. this, this yes. is your I, moment, lad. Stand, Do it now. I stand on the book and I start. I guess I. So how is this going to work? Like I can just study it and copy it. I don't think I. Can so copy it. in order to copy it, you have to have like these special inks and stuff. Now Zephyros sure. might have some special inks that he's willing sure. to let you use, which would be like a D a DM freebie. But so you have to make a roll to try to copy it from his book to your book. I don't right. even think you have to roll. Uh, it just, just, just takes time. I think you can just do it. Yeah. Oh, really? Okay. Like, I yeah. thought there was like a roll that you had to make. Nope. So, uh, cool. How much of your knowledge may I have? Uh, and pardon me, I don't have any ink right now. No. Oh, no. I have a little bit to spare. 
he reaches oh. into that same pocket and it keeps pulling the stuff all out of the same pocket you've noticed like all his books everything he touches even the plates and some of the food he's taken out of the same pocket that's kind of a gross pocket <laughs> and this guy is the nicest spellcaster that's ever lived because no wizard lets you look in his spell book. he sets this big vial of inks down he's like i have enough for you to at least do one before we get there and oh, this file of inks is possibly, oh, uh, let's see. It's probably about a, a foot high. So it's like a little tiny Carmex tub to him. Oh. But to you, it's pretty large. It's like a vat of ink. Oh, my goodness. I got I to gotta capture some of this ink and take it for myself. <laughs> <laughs> you feel like you want to just dive into this ink. Yeah. <laughs> just rub it all over your chest <laughs> does anybody have any jars I can I can borrow some of the sink mm. I don't have any vials your size I'm sorry Wait but you minute. can use some while you're here I'm gonna look down in my inventory here I have a one ounce bottle of ink that I got. But so, that's not the uh, magical. No, ink. it's not. It's not magical ink. You need all the regions to uh, write these spells down in your spell book. So it takes a certain amount of ink and a certain kind. But you just happen to know this is the kind. And you can learn two spells from his book of first or second level. And uh, what spells does he have? He has first level, charm person, comprehend languages, magic missile, and shield. And second level, crown of madness, gust of wind, and levitate. I'm going to be taking first level. What was it? Charm person. Comprehend languages. I'm going to take the Comprehend Languages. Wait, wait. Uh, you can only get one spell? Two. I can, I can get two. Oh, nice. And Which then second level is Crown of Madness, Gust of Wind, and Levitate. I'll take Levitate. And uh, this will take you some time to do. It'll take you time to write these spells and not just write them, but also to, to transcribe them out of his giant book. It, right. It'll actually take you a little longer than normal. It's going to take you double the amount of time because of how hard it is to transcribe. You have to shrink everything down to size. Sure. Oh, that's awesome. When, dude? But he is very excitable when you're learning these new ways to cast magic, and he's teaching you the different components and the uh, verbal parts and the somatic and some of his uh, little notes in his, well, his big notes in his giant book. He's teaching you what his notations mean and some of his shorthand, too. And he's very free and open with all the information. Nice. He doesn't even ask ever. you for your own spells. I'll offer to share... Uh, sure. So he's like, I would, I would love to learn a spell. What do you suggest? Um, have you ever been invisible? <laughs> oh, that sounds like a plot point. <laughs> have sounds, you ever been invisible? <laughs> he smiles big. That sounds amazing. Well, here, here you go. I'll read it to you. Please, that's really Your hard eyes. to read. It's so small, I apologize. So I'll I'll go through the invisibility spell. Okay. And uh, let's see what it do, 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 do. And I'll teach him all the verbal, semantic, and materials okay. that he needs. It's an eyelash encased in a gum. So for the next few days while you guys are traveling north straight over the ocean, you and him are studying magic and Thomas, you don't have a spell book. That's right. I don't 
do a lot with the books. So he spent a <laughs> lot of time with Arthur over the next few days. They talk about different uh, studying methods and notations, different arcane knowledges they're trading. He tries to explain over and over the ordering because people keep asking. <laughs> it's, such a, it's such a tough concept. Wait, to, like, so understand. where are we ordering? <laughs> Who right. are they? What are they? Who broke it? How can you fix it? You need a forge. <laughs> <laughs> but that's what you guys I'll do share, for the next few days. I'll share information about it with my past and who my teacher was. Okay. He was the one that gave me the note. He is the most trusting giant you've ever met. Probably the only giant you've ever met. Yep. And because we've lived through this meeting. <laughs> yeah, so, and, and so far, one out of one dragons we've met have been friendly, and one out of one giants have been friendly. So yeah, they're I'm pretty sure the whole world is full of good people. <laughs> it's just confusing. It's just so great. This is a magical world. Nothing bad can ever happen to us. Oh, God. <laughs> that is agree. what I'm learning. <laughs> what is yeah. everyone else doing in these few days while they're spending an, an enormous amount of time together? I drank a lot and <laughs> uh, I drunkenly pray to Morgan that I don't end up in the water. That okay, is so you stay afloat. in the middle of the room. <laughs> yes, I don't go to the edges. I definitely don't go outside. <laughs> don't look out the windows. No, I hang out. Never look out the windows. Out. You hang out on the clouds a lot. Thomas is busy doing his King of the World routine while I stay inside and keep my butthole clenched. Yeah. I see how close, like, if I pee on the edge of the clouds, does it roll off or does it stay up? Does it pass through? Like, I'm I'm doing rigorous scientific experimentation. <laughs> oh, well, he <laughs> yeah, showed you how to use the bathroom and you just can sit on the cloud stuff and as you use it it'll just form holes and it'll go straight down <laughs> so good <laughs> oh, you what? found the bathroom good job <laughs> <laughs> Let's so see. yes as you're peeing it just opens up and everything goes through hmm uh, I would also like him to make introductions to the griffins Okay, and he will do that. Because once we're friends, I want to kind of, you know, be friends. You want to ride one, be real. Well, yes. But I understand that it's a slow process. Like, okay. two, three hours, I wouldn't be able to ride this thing. <laughs> <laughs> the patience of a saint. <laughs> Thomas, what are if you doing? If he goes... Yeah. That's you, Alex. You mean Theodore? Theodore, shit. <laughs> Damn it, why do you guys make your names name so similar? Uh, I'm probably doing a thing similar to the dwarf, except for rather than being in the center, I'm more like keeping my back to walls so I can see uh, pretty much everywhere that I can. Okay. It's so paranoid. Yeah. Very paranoid. <laughs> yeah, very paranoid. <laughs> Anything about the Griffins? Nope, if, uh, I'm good. Don't if care. he's gonna go, if Thomas is gonna meet the Griffins, I'll go with him just to make sure that they don't kill him. Okay. <laughs> You'd have, have to interrupt good. Zephyros from his studies. Hmm. Mr. Zephyros? <laughs> I knock on the door. <laughs> there is no door. Yeah, just go up the hole. Okay. Well, then I, I pull out the the horn of announcing. <laughs> As you're traveling upward. Okay, you get up to the <laughs> second floor. By the time you're up, he's looking at you. The, the covers are pulled forward. He was having a nap. <laughs> he was having a something. He's rubbing his eyes. <laughs> yeah, he was. That is an interesting horn. It reminds me of the conch shells. Yes, they're very much like it. I have, yes. I have not been able to find a good conch shell um, that uh, 
withstands the dropping that sometimes happens. That's some, what that... take us to the maelstrom, he says. Wait, what? The conch shells. Oh, you, you must have better ones than I have. The ones I have mostly just let you hear the ocean, but since you're standing on the ocean anyway, you would already hear it even if you didn't have it up to your ear. <laughs> no, most of the giant lords have a conch shell that takes them to the maelstrom. Can I see that? You bet. He throws it out the window. I was <laughs> sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> I start laughing seriously. Carmen just starts to laugh. Sorry, almost pieces of armor. I jump out the window and I land on the clouds and get it. Oh fuck! <laughs> You're on the second story, uh, lad. Don't you saw when he threw it. It wasn't like just a toss. Well, it was, but it's gone. It's a giant toss. It's gone, lad. Let it go. Let it go. <laughs> Rage mage. <laughs> oh, poor Brian. His heart's broken right now. <laughs> Rage mage. Cast your spell. I, st mage. I stand up on the foot of his bed. And I say, I believe now is the time that I meet your griffins. What? <sighs> I was sleeping. I was fine. I feel a little bad now. He rubs his eyes. I don't know how I'm going to introduce myself to them now that... Well, that probably would have made them kill you anyways. I... It, sometimes it makes me want to kill them. That's a terrible <laughs> noise. <sighs> Well, I pat Thomas on the back. I say, sorry, lad. You are a better wizard than you are a mu mu musician. It looks like I'm going to have to find a conch shell. Yes. Right, we'll, take we'll take it from a giant lord. Okay. Up we go. Up we go. Talk, talk about fulfilling a prophecy. He saw us at the maelstrom. <laughs> Suddenly he wants a conch shell. <laughs> <laughs> oh. You guys ride up the lift, the magic lift, and you get to the third floor where there are four... Actually, there's only three griffins settled in the area. And if you've been out on the clouds quite a bit, you have seen every once in a while they're taking off and coming back. They treat this place as their nest, their roost, their home. <laughs> These are my griffins. Well, I don't really... They're not really mine. They just come and go as they please. These are the griffins. The griffins. I don't I don't know how to introduce you. They I do not to... have name. Normally I introductions are made with names. This is Phanon. And Pontus. Phaenon and Antus. Pontus. Pontus. And that, Pontus. that's Lunar Beak. And that's Smirk Spike. I'll cast a good berry and give you three good berries in which you get luck. <laughs> <laughs> what, was the name? what was the name of... I've got... Phanon, Pontius, and Smirk Spike. Lunar Beak. Lunar Beak? Yes. Lunar Beak. So there are four of them. Do Very you nice. actually have animal handling? Uh, probably not. <laughs> I have a high wisdom. That's as good as it gets. I have a, I have a non-negative wisdom. Yeah, I have animal handling, but I'm not the one doing it. <laughs> I know. <laughs> he goes up to one of the griffins and he treats it kind of like a someone would treat a kitten. He just kind of pets it across the top of the head. And the griffin looks like it puts up with it because it's probably familiar with Zephyros and it's much 
smaller than Zephyros. <laughs> right. But it doesn't look like it's a loving creature. It's not pushing its head, nuzzling further into his hand or anything. He just kind of... It's not into it. It's okay with it. Yeah, it's, it's fine with it because this horrible. is where it sleeps and eats. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. This one's Lunar Beak. She goes out mostly at night. Mm. Because lunar means to be having a moon. Yes. <laughs> Fair enough. Okay, we've seen them. Now can we go? Mm, for today, yes. Perhaps okay. tomorrow we ride them? No. Well, you I can't don't. ride them. Only you can ride You can ride only in their gullet. So, I do not want to ride in them. No, you can't ride them. They're not riding griffins. Those would have to be trained from being very young. Well, right, these are, do, do you any of these happens? have to, are going to be having babies? Yes, oh, she points over towards Lunar Beak. <gasps> Lunar Beak is going to have babies? She has a clutch of eggs. Oh, do not touch the egg. Do not touch the egg. May I need to <laughs> ask you a favor. No. no. We both say at the same time. You can no. tell in your like few days you spent with Zephyros, his wisdom is pretty low. And he gives you an immediate no. But we have an opportunity to be raising them from babies. So... No. I, I must admit I am confused. These aren't The characters. scariest thing... The scariest thing is trying to rid a mother of her babies Listen, in the animal kingdom. But she yeah. goes out in the nighttime. We if see... We, no, we, if, it's no, not like we're going no, to eat them. No, we need to be... No, if you, no, no. If you take her baby, she'll kill all of us. Except for him. I point at Zephyros. I said I'd mm. show him to you. And here we are. Okay, all right. All done now, all done. I continue to be disappointed. Aye, good for you, lad. Let's go down. <laughs> well, right. I'm going to go prepare my spell. I would suggest everyone stays on the first floor for this. I have a question for you, Zephyros. Hmm. If you lose consciousness again, is there any way we can fly your tower? Or are we all going to die? I think it landed because I didn't have a destination last time. That sounds good enough for my liking. I was just How covering long? at that point. How long should we wait before we come and check on you? Oh... Well, if you hear anything weird, stay on the first floor. <laughs> oh, weird <God>. like <laughs> what? Weird like, like anything, because we don't know if anything. If I'm speaking a different language. Different from common? Or giant. Or if I'm screaming. I if you're screaming, we'll stay on the first floor. Both of them, Are you yes. sure you didn't need help? Maybe if you're screaming. I am a cleric. Why yes. would you? Uh, be, why would you be screaming? Also that. Um. Well, I'll try to explain it to you. I yes. cast what? a spell. The spell is called Contact Other Plane, and sometimes it makes my mind snap into insanity. <laughs> I'm like mm, well, sometimes you... it doesn't that sounds like a bad spell I, but I can do not learn think things. I past it do you have no other way to learn stuff besides snapping your mind well first hand but I can learn things that are happening across the world like about these cloud giants I have an idea of who it might be that you're talking about and I want to know for sure Oh, okay. We'll go high downstairs. Come on, Tom. Time for us to leave. Mm. All right. I will. I will go with you. To so protect he starts you in pulling the different things from his nightstand to uh, prepare his ritual spell. I come protect me. 
That sounds great. Whatever gets you downstairs. And uh, hide under the table. It's yep. dark. <laughs> <laughs> yes, please. <laughs> Mr. Theodore is always skulking about. That's what I'm I, good at. He's a smart lad. <laughs> Okay, so you all go down to the first floor, and he starts speaking in what you would think is gibberish as he's preparing his spell. Um, probably the arcane verbal components that he needs to. Sure. Hibbity jibbity. And then we'll see if Mecca his mind Mecca hiney ho. So he will roll. Oh, he doesn't have that save. Well, he'll try it anyways. Uh -oh. <laughs> that's a, that's a lad. Oh, no. Wisdom uh, save. Intelligence. Hey, that's good. Is it intelligence? So you hear him casting the spell, speaking in gibberish, and then everything gets silent. And he starts talking in giant. And he starts... Uh, I can actually understand giant, so... Asking nice. some questions. At least he's not screaming. I figure no screaming is a good sign. No screaming is always a good sign. So I'll repeat back whatever he says in common. Kind of translate it. So... The first question he asks is, was this attack on Nightstone by cloud giants? And you don't hear anything. And you hear him whimper. <laughs> and then he says, was that cloud giant city controlled by the Countess Sensuri? And he goes, <gasps> kind of gasps. What are your perceptions? Okay. Perception. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not listening. <laughs> you are listening. You're very attentive to the things he's saying, the gasps and the whimpers. Me too. I'm not paying attention very well. Yeah, and as a group, you fail with the three failures and two successes. This is amazing. You guys keep botching. <laughs> yeah, we're great at that. Mm -hmm. His third question. Has the Countess forsaken Anam's laws when the ordering was broken? And you can gather that he's only able to ask yes or no questions. He's not able to ascertain, like, anything that needs uh -huh. to be expounded upon. Sure. But as you're doing that, as you're listening, as he's doing that, you hear the sound of wings flapping. <sighs> oh, fuck. Oh, From fuck. From outside. Oh, shite. I run to a window. Um, There are no windows on the first floor. Oh, fuck. I run outside. You pull the curtain back that's uh, hiding the front door vestibule from the outside. The door is closed. You can't reach the knob. It's about oh, 10 shite. feet high. How high can, can you I... jump? Me? <laughs> <laughs> I'm... Uh... I, I don't know. I don't know how to jump up. Let's see. How 5e jumping. Jump up. <laughs> I can see long jump. Where's the... The high jump? It should be under strength if you click it. Uh, high jump. When you make a high jump, you leap into the air number of feet equal to three plus your strength modifier if you move at least 10 feet on foot immediately before the jump. Wow. So you could reach um, it. You'd have to get a running start. Okay, get a running start and I go for it. 
You do. You get a running start, you jump, and you can grab the knob. Um, it's actually a latch. And if you pull the latch down, it lifts up that part and mm -hmm. unlatches the door. But then the door would have to um, be pulled open, too. So I yell, Thomas, help me open the door. I think we're in a lot of trouble. As I jiggle up and down on the latch and try to get it to release. <laughs> so you see the dwarf jiggling the latch up and down. It looks like he's grabbing onto like a, a big beam, but it's really just the tiny latch for the giant. What are you doing, Thomas? Uh, did you open, open right, the door? All right, uh, uh, sure. Wait, so I'm going to go. So he lifts the latch, and you see the door kind of slightly... Uh -huh. Um, come out. You'd have to push on it pretty hard because mm. the door is open outwards. Right. So yeah, I'll uh, I'll wedge my magician staff in and pry and push. Okay, give me an athletics check. Mm. Oh, seventeen is great. You. Push against the door, you pry it open, and once you get past that lock that sealed the pressure, the door goes Foof! and slowly rotates outward. I ride with the it. the dwarf riding it the whole way. So <laughs> let's go down to the first floor. So the dwarf would be riding the door outward to right there. Does that show up right. on the, uh, your map? I don't see it right there. You don't see you mean my like pings? right here? Like right here? Yeah. Why is my ping not showing up? But I'm still over the cloud, right? I'm not like hanging out over space. Still over the cloud. That's good. All right. I'll drop down and I go look for the dragon. Okay. Well, my ping's not showing up for everyone, but whatever. Can't do anything about that. Can you here do it again? While I'm looking, making sure I'm looking at the right part. I am doing it. Yep, we don't oh. see it. Are we Do you in... see mine? Yeah, I see yours. Yeah, I see yours. That's exactly okay. what I was saying. talking about, though. Yep. So is, is that still about the same spot? <laughs> yeah. Okay. You nailed it. <laughs> Good job. Yeah, but nailed it. what you see when you get out is some people that are now standing on the cloud and what? a small dragon flying to the side up above right where the first floor label is north of the tower looks like it had dropped some people off at the door and then it dropped a couple people off at the second floor oh shit so that's what you see everyone go ahead and give me an initiative roll yep and mm. I'm gonna get I'm gonna find your character tokens Fog uh what not Fulgaros, but uh, what's the giant's name? His name Zephyros. is Zephyros. He's fucked, because we're all down here. Mm -hmm. If only I had a griffin to ride. <laughs> if only I had a griffin to ride. <laughs> oh, my initiative is great. My initiative is not sure. I roll a one. <laughs> Actually, rolled a, I rolled a two, but... Yes, the mages are so fast. Whoa, we're in we're yeah, in the wrong place. <laughs> I have to shrink you down to size. These are ten foot squares. Right. So Arthur, you're inside. Same as Theodore. <laughs> Trying um, not to look at anything. <laughs> oh, you're not Jacquard anymore. I don't have a token for you. Let me uh, um I guess I forgot one thing. It's not bad. You can just put me in the Jakarta, I guess, in the manner. But your other toga looks so cool. I'll, I know. I'll get it. I guess I'll get he it. is pretty fast to make. I was so happy when I found that picture. That's, That's why I decided exactly to get me. Let's see if I can find you. Here we go. Let's go ahead and make him initiative roll. And then I'll roll in. Uh, I don't have much luck with those. Initiative rolls? No, you have terrible luck. <gasps> I. 
going fast is not my thing. Okay. I think I got it. <laughs> I yell in to Arthur and Theodore. Protect the Zephyros. <laughs> we are being invaded. Invader? <laughs> yes. I <laughs> it speaks the truth. <laughs> Protect the giant or we will all crash and die. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> there you go. Oh. <laughs> That'd be great. I am so big. <laughs> I wonder if I have enlarged yet. Hey, now my pings are showing up. Yep, we got you sorted now. Are you actually That's down enough for now? Alright, and I'm gonna give you control and I'm gonna show your nameplate and all your other stuff. So you should have everything there you can put your own name in. Mm. Alright. Sweet. Mm -hmm. Thanks for waiting for me. Where's the initiative tracker? I'll put it up in a second. Oh. There we go. So, quick question out of the game. Do we do I know that Thomas is actually a barbarian that beats the ever living crap out of stuff with his big stick? I don't think he's told you yet. I don't think he knows that. So I don't know that either. I think he's <laughs> yeah. actually a wizard. <laughs> you don't know what he is. What do you think of him? I mean, he's huge and dumb. I don't know what he is. He's <laughs> a special ed kid who rides the short bus, but no one wants to piss off. I can obviously <laughs> cast some magical spells, but I'm right? obviously not dealing with the same limited hand that the gods gave you, for example. As far as physical yeah. stature. <laughs> yeah, you're huge. You're like a monster. Correct. And that and I have a 16 strength, so I'm pretty beefcake, but you're like jacked. Mm -hmm. I gotta make one more token. I love how we split the party for this fight already. It's great. Mm -hmm. yeah, we were split before the fight. And it's uh it's the bruisers and the bruised. <laughs> right? <laughs> the squishers and the squishy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I imagine we'll be okay. Yeah, we should be fine. So, I guess I can't really see without zooming. I guess maybe if I zoom way in and see what I had to. Huh. What are you looking for? I wanted to see oh. what kind of. Is it a, is it a red dragon? <laughs> uh oh. It's a red dragon. We can't fuck okay. with a red dragon. Well, it's too late now. Game on. Are we? Here's a question: Are we Fourth level. flying over the water? <laughs> <laughs> no. Oh, it won't matter God, when you hit no. the water; you'll die. <laughs> if that's what you're thinking. <laughs> it's, it says that I'm specifically not encumbered. Doesn't but... matter. <laughs> falling damage Whoa. is falling damage. Regardless. Please, God, no. <laughs> this oh, is like Jesus. my worst nightmare. This is literally Carmen's worst nightmare. <laughs> it's like, oh, no. This is so bad. We're, We're in between a giant die. and a dragon fighting over the water. Yeah, that's... Right? Worst day ever. <laughs> okay. And I'm not quite done with everything. I'm just setting up the battlefield. I guess I didn't prepare this one as well as I thought I had. We forgive you. Thanks. I don't care. Uh, I don't need your forgiveness. Thanks. I don't care. <laughs> oh, there's more of them. Oh, fuck. These guys are kind of up on the second floor. Oh, they're going to go in and kill the giant. That's bad. Are oh, they climbing the outside? They're on that uh, second floor tower. Ah. Uh, I can move them to the second floor where the orb hangs. They're up there. Oh, fuck. They're on top. 
There we go. I moved it up. You have there's to windows. scroll up. There's windows from there, right? There's windows? There's windows. So, mayhap, you guys can get up there and shoot down once you take care of those two fuckers trying to kill the giant. So how did the going up and down work on that? Was it like 30 part seconds of, of going up? or Part of it goes up, part of it goes down. How long does it take to go up? That's what he wants to know. It takes about 10 seconds. So that's your action, basically? Yep, and you can put right. your uh, initiatives in now. 16. Yeah, got mine. Um, I am. And one more, just to throw it in there. There's a lot of initiatives going on. And the drag. More initiatives than I can count. Can I move this thing? I can. Sweet. So let's These go ahead and These fuckers start are first. not big and blue. I do not like them. I, I don't like them either. I believe we should... We should uh, approach this diplomatic. We go into them, we beat them to death, and throw them over the edge. <laughs> <laughs> I like your idea of diplomacy. Let's see how it pans out. <laughs> And 1d20 for the dragon. Jesus. Oh, fuck. <laughs> the dragon. If only this I is... had my horn to warn the, dra the giant. <laughs> <laughs> well, too bad. He didn't have it anymore. Karma, he you threw rolled it out his window. I, I, I am not good at it going first. I am mm. the slowest. Turn order bigger so I can actually get Yeah, that's a lot of turn order going on. So you heard the wings flapping outside of this red dragon. Um, it's pretty large. It's not as large as Polgoros was, but it's still pretty large. And it looks like it must have just dropped off some of the fanatics on the cloud stuff, and it dropped off a couple of the other guys up above. However, it starts circling the tower. It looks like it's looking for something. Arthur, roll off. <laughs> He's looking for... Roll off? Roll off. It's the regular d20. Hey, the dragon is looking for food. Mm. Okay, so you will go right after the guys up on the second floor. Uh, you don't know what they're doing. They're up on the second floor. Go ahead, Arthur. Uh, all right. So I'm gonna cast Mage Armor on myself. First action, you cast Mage Armor, and it looks like an outline of armor as you cast it, and it just shields your entirety of your body, and then dissipates back to you in your normal clothes. You and can move. I. Uh, I'll yell, come inside, shut the door, help protect the giant. And I'll move out, I'll go up upstairs. Oh, that would actually have made sense. <laughs> yep, that would have been a great thing to do. <laughs> Unfortunately, it's not what we did. Carmen, well, you, you haven't a done anything health yet. According to your health bar. What's up? Your health bar says you're a little bit hurt. Oh, I'm not a little bit hurt, actually. I am good to go. So after Arthur, Theodore, you see Arthur zoop, zips upstairs. <laughs> that actually looked like he okay. zipped upstairs. That was funny. Ma it did. Mage armor is an action, right? Yes. So it doesn't take uh, an action to get up the stairs then? It just takes your movement to get out of the thing. It's not stairs. Okay. Which well, pushes you the, up. The it pushes you up. It's a lift so. of magic, and it's basically like levitate spell. Okay, so I can move in there and shoot after I get up, is what yep. I'm getting. Okay, I will move into it. 
and you go up. It'll go up in one round. Okay. And then the... You'll be on the second floor. When you get up there, it keeps going. Uh, same for you, Mr. Arthur. You guys are going to keep going right by up you to the You keep going place. right by. Um, there's nothing to like stop you from going all the way up. The only way you've been going up and down was when he would help you. He'd like basically pull you out of the air. Let's take a shot on the way by. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, do I get an attack as I'm going up? What do I see when I'm up there? So sure. what you see is ropes being thrown down and they show right outside the window. You do not see the two people that were dropped off up there. Uh, can I well, shoot the rope? <laughs> yeah, it'd be a little difficult shot. I have sharpshooter, so that's my reason I'm actually even trying that. That would make it harder first... if you sharpshoot. Well, you know what I mean, though. Uh, yeah, ignore sorry. cover and all this stuff. Ignore cover, three quarter cover. So go He's ahead and roll the the needle. Needle. And then because of Dread Ambusher, I get two attack. It doesn't actually give me what it is. Uh, at the start of your first turn, or at the start of your first turn of each combat, mm -hmm. your walking speed is increased by ten, which lasts until the end of that turn. If you take the attack action on that turn, you can make an additional weapon attack as part of that action. Okay. So I get two attacks, and not sharpshooter, but ignoring the or making it accurate. Okay. For some reason, none of your stuff ever links when you link it. I don't know why. Uh, but we'll do 16 and 11 for the two attacks, one on each rope. Uh, you'll hit the rope once. Okay. The 16 hits. Here, let's, uh... You're going up. You shoot the rope right outside the window. And you see it swinging. It's now got an arrow stuck in it, but it can probably you can probably gather that it's been compromised a little. Okay. And you continue upwards towards the airy. Same as you, Arthur. You're now going up towards the airy. I believe that's the end of my turn. Then. I think you went before Tom Ito. Let me put you in order. Thomas Ito. Oh, Ito. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead. Tom Ito. Yeah, he, they're basically having a separate combat. Mm, yeah. Mm -hmm. Because I am going to let out a disgusting yell and then 5, 10, 15. Now, each of these squares are 10 20. feet. Just remember that. Yep. So you let out a disgusting. Are you raging? Uh, actually, I'm going to go to here, and then I am going to rage. That's my motive. You want to be in between it when you rage. Yeah. So, so you I'm see your friend take around. off foo, 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 over the cloud stuff. You look out, Carmen, mm -hmm. while you're hanging from this latch, and you can see land really far away you can see clouds you can see the ocean the vast size of the ocean and everything around oh, is God. intimidating when you're this high up my stomach does a somersault when i see all the ocean before you rage theodore oh yep i want to know what happens before you attack i mean oh yeah that does just... change things I just rolled 1d8, which on my thing is you teleport up to 20 feet to an unoccupied space you can see. Until your rage ends, you can activate this effect again on each of your turns as a bonus action. Wow. Okay. So you can continue to teleport <laughs> so as a bonus action. So I'm a combat jumper. So, um, so I'm going to move 20 feet to 5, 10, 15... You don't have to move 20 feet. It's up to 20 feet. Yeah. But I'm going to teleport there. And I'm going to beat this guy off the edge. <laughs> so to <laughs> grapple him, you'd have to grapple. And then you can move him from there. Oh, I got no interest in grappling. I'm going to... He's going to beat him up and push gonna, his body off. I'm going to push him gently with my magician staff. Yes, so gently. So, so gently. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> 
Um, and I'm going to oh use one God. of my. I'm going to use my first inspiration. Well, I'm pretty. Sure, is that missing? That is a hit. Oh, then never mind. Then yeah, I'm going to club the poor bastard for 13 damage. Well, more than 13. Three plus six plus four is your strength mod. Plus, what do you get for rage damage? Um, is that not okay, counting for everything? It says uh, but it's that the, the, it's not gosh. counting rage. It's two d six plus damage. four. So it's three. Two d six is going to be a three and a six plus four. So 13 plus my rage damage, which is the why I don't know. Uh two. Rage. So no, 15 plus bludgeoning. two with strength. Yep. Jeez. 15 bludgeoning. Um you can just toss them right off the edge a little bit. Yeah. I just because I was over <laughs> here, I teleported, and then I give him the full Hank Aaron. More like a Mark McGuire <laughs> baseball swing, and just hit it, hit him in the shoulder, and just buckle his ass backwards. His body spins off. around once. His body <laughs> spins around twice, and you see him tumbling off the edge of the cloud, and doesn't even scream because when you hit him, you knocked him unconscious in one shot. Nice, holy crap! <laughs> nice job. All right, Very cool, lad. <laughs> no, Theodore already went. It will be their turn. I don't know why they disappeared. I think this just tracked them backwards. Let's put him back. Because oh, they go before everybody. Yeah, they're going at 20. There's two sets of initiative. Oh. Yeah. Oh, there's ah. the dragon, and then I see them at 20. Yeah, I see dragon and them at 20. The giant at 12. Right. And then Carmen at one. Yep. There we go. Now they should be back. They're not back. No. Oh, well. I'll put them back here. They oh, go at zero. 12. Oh, at a 12. Okay. They were there and then they disappeared. Weird. Okay. That should be all fixed up. So they're going to go on a 12. Well, they just saw their friend get thrown off the cloud stuff. This one in the back grabs a bag and dumps it. It looks like he just says empty. <laughs> Whatever was in the bag comes out. Oh, I want that Terrible. bag. <laughs> this one... When you say this one, are you this pinging? One this one. All three of these are going to leave. 10, 20, 30, 10, 20, 30. Well, where are they going? I don't see anything Oh, happening. so they run past me? Well, under you. You're hanging from the latch. <laughs> 10 oh. feet up. Okay. <laughs> I mean, I thought I was going to let go of the latch when the door swung open, but I guess I haven't. This is all happening at once because you rolled initiative as this happened. Okay. 10, 20, 30, 10, 20, 30. He can only get that far. They all run past you guys and leave their I think it's in uh, things of tens. Yeah, they're double moving. Oh, okay. Got it. Dashing. And then, well, that'll happen on when I say it happens. Go ahead, Carmen. You just saw them all leave and two of them go up. Mm. Foom, foom. Okay, I drop down. Okay. And I'm going to go 10, 25. And get you to this pull guy. Pull back the curtain, this bright purple curtain with yellow stars and moons, and you see this guy running full speed. When you dropped 10 feet, you're going to take a little bit of damage. You might not take any. Okay. Because of your armor. Yep, you take I'm zero cool. damage because of your feet. So when you drop, you hit the ground hard, but you absorb the damage. You pull the curtain back, and you see this guy in a red cloak. And it has on it, embroidered on the front patch, uh, the head of a red dragon. It almost blends in with the colors. I'm going to punch him with my hammer. <laughs> it, your shield is not equipped, just so you know. Yep. Son of a... <laughs> 
Mm. I'm aware. <laughs> Warhammer. Puh. Nine is him? not a hit. Oh, man. All right. Well, I'm gonna inspiration. Inspiration it. Warhammer. Puh. A 23, 23 is definitely a hit. Okay. You bring your hammer up and around in a big uppercut motion and in one shot lay him out. You want to do lethal or non-lethal? Um, I'm probably do non-lethal. Non-lethal. So he goes down. We'll give him and a then little, like, ow. As a bonus action, I'm going to cast Spiritual Weapon and smash the other dude with my Spiritual Weapon. Oh, okay. So that's a spell attack. Mm -hmm. What kind of spiritual weapon do you summon? Uh, hmm. A spiritual one. I, I, <laughs> I summon a keg. <laughs> Just a keg? Yeah. A keg yes. that yeah. sings in the air? I summon a keg in the air and it bludgeons him in the head. It's got spirit. That's right. It's a spiritual weapon. <laughs> <laughs> um, Taste my fury. Is it technically a melee attack? Because uh, I don't know if you can weapon. deal non-lethal with spiritual. I, I think, think it I is. I think it is a melee. I want to say melee. it is a magical. It's a melee spell attack. Melee. Let's go non-lethal damage. I think it has to be melee. Okay, well, I brain the shit out of him then by accident. Whoops. <laughs> oh, I don't even see that rule. Well, then I'm not going to worry about it. You brain the shit out of him. You didn't mean right. to hit him that hard with the spirits, but you Whoops. did. <laughs> 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 the okay. game comes out of midair and does just the same thing as your hammer would, but there's no like handle to the hammer, so it just... Bah! Hits him in the side of the head. That was your turn. Wow. Um, yep. Bonus move. That was everything. Yeah, I used all my stuff except for my reaction. Okay. And this dragon is way too large, I realize, on the scale of everything. <laughs> okay. Because when you made it, I was like, oh, fuck. <laughs> that's better. Oh, that's better. <laughs> So it looks like it is flying around to the western side. <laughs> you guys pass by up on the second floor, Arthur slash Theodore. And you uh -huh. see Zephyro still sitting there. Looks like he's in some kind of a trance and he's still asking questions, but it's been so loud and noisy around you that you haven't been able to hear the last two questions. And he's not paying attention as you both travel up to the airy. Well, that's where the cultists are going. <laughs> Was it? The cultists uh, hopped in the pad are going to go after you guys up to the area. They also don't have a way to get down. To get off. There's no way to get off the lift. Uh, I have a as the idea. levitate spell unless you do something actively to change that to propel yourself. Because you can only go straight up or down. Mm. Kind of. You can push off from things if there was something to push off from. Yeah. But if there there's was. not. <laughs> nope. So I guess I'm going to the top. You could, uh, like, uh, Thomas cast Gust. You've seen that happen. I don't have Gust. But that's not it, your it, turn quite yet. I'm okay. sorry. All right. Great. I was just mentioning right. that you guys keep going up. There's one more thing that is happening. I just have to see the... It's hard to hold three pieces on the map here. Tom Ito, you feel something. Ato. Ato. Tom Ato. Tomato. Don't you dare call him Tomato. <laughs> <laughs> Tom Ato. 
Tell me. You're the uh, only person that he can uh, your, uh, not actually AC? physically hit. My AC is 14. Okay. I'm going to use my uh, inspiration. <laughs> <laughs> Same I feel nothing. Problem. You do. You feel wind. <sighs> but it's like breezy outside. You're not really sure what's going on. Yeah. yeah I'm outside. <laughs> oh, my God. And wow, you see dude. a glimpse of something swing right past you. It's right next to you. And you can't actually see what this thing is. And it's trying to slam itself against you, but you're just moving naturally is enough to get out of the way for some reason. And you see the outline of this invisible creature that's trying to hit you. <gasps> that was its turn. Go ahead, Arthur. No, these um, two guys are actually. Okay. You see the rope swinging down. And... This guy climbs into and onto the windowsill. Actually, I don't oh, even think you bummer. can see it anymore on the second floor. Because you are now in the airy. And this guy will also start climbing down. And he's going to have to roll on athletics to see if he stays up. Oh, God. All right. So he, Ryan's uh, in top form today. <laughs> I just rolled two ones in a row. This is normal for me. So he, Does he fall to his death? No one sees it happen. Does it really happen if no one's there to see it? <laughs> <laughs> He's climbing down the rope through the window slat, and all of a sudden, the rope snaps. And he, you hear someone screaming from outside. Ah! Yeah, 100 <laughs> cloud stuff damage. I wonder if that absorbs any fallen damage. We'll find out if you guys fall. That's the question. Okay, well, that was a waste of turn. Go ahead, Arthur. <laughs> You're going um, up to the airy where there are four griffins, and right now there's only two griffins outside, or inside, I mean. And they are on high alert. They're squawking and screaming. You see Lunar Beak is awake, and her eyes are bulged out, and she's um, covering her clutch protectively. Her am babies. I able to get... Am I now able to get out of the... Whatever it is? Can I step down? Um, You'd have to find a way to propel yourself. Is Arthur right? Or, I'm sorry. You're now eye level to Theodore. I push off Theodore. <laughs> <laughs> and as I do, I cast invisibility on him. Nice. Ooh. Hmm. So you cast invisibility on Theodore. You push yourself back just a bit, which pushes you into the uh, featherfall region of this shaft, and it pushes him into the top level where all the griffins are. You start going down. One of these griffins squawks, and it looks like it's um starting to get pretty agitated by Theodore's presence. You are now about to pass by. One of the cultists coming up. <laughs> he tries to grab onto you. It's the craziest combat. <laughs> yep. Or he's going to try to grab onto you. He's going to grab me? He's going to try on his turn. You're starting to pass by. You're changing levels again. <clears throat> so, did you want to do anything else? You used your action. You pushed off Theodore, which is part of your movement. You can do a bonus action. You can move, maybe. You're kind of angled, too. Like, you might not go straight down. You might be able to land on the second floor if you want. That's what I'm trying to do. Okay. I think with the way you pushed yourself, you are going to, but you'll get out of the uh, lift region. You're going to take some fall damage. Ooh. Ooh. And each of the floors is like 100 feet, right? Yeah, he's not going to fall <laughs> the whole way. I was going to say, that's horrible. <laughs> and the top and floor to the second floor. I imagine you live. Oh, that's good. Uh, Featherfall lasts until you land, by the way. Is oh, that a reaction? That's a good call, actually. You are right. Featherfall lasts until you land. I've already ca I already cast a spell. It's not your spell. It's, it's just, a part as of you the... enter the lift, you gain that effect. 
Oh, right. okay. Thank you, Theodore. So you are going to float backwards onto the second floor, and you'll float out actually all the way to his little chest. Zephyros's chest. You want to do anything else? Uh, I guess if that's what I'm doing. Oh God, can I have? Con I don't know if I have control of my dude. You do. You just moved him. Oh, where did I move him to? Oh, there he is. Jesus, didn't want to do that. Um, can I be like right here? Yeah, you Not can end right there. Uh, I guess I'll just duck down. You duck down, you're kind of out of vision with the bed frame being about 10 feet high from the top and the chest being about 5 feet high at the top. You don't see over the bed frame and you don't see the dragon outside the west uh, part of the tower. Tom. Okay. Tom. Back to the first floor. Ground control the major Tom. You see the outlines of some invisible creature because it accidentally revealed itself to you while it was trying to strike you. Oh, nice. So what are you doing? So I can see... Yep, you can see the outlines of the creature that was trying to slam you. Same thing you did to that one guy that's now off the edge. Okay. Um, and there he is. Okay. So I'm going to rear back. Like I'm going to take a huge happy Gilmore swing. And then I'm going to teleport. Boop. As a bonus action. And then clopper and time him. <laughs> All right. Roll the hit. Hmm. <laughs> And I'm going to use one of my two inspirations. <laughs> I don't even... There we go. <laughs> a 23 is a hit for 20. 11 bludgeoning damage to this creature. Plus two. Plus two for raging. So 13. Is it magical damage? It or is. Is, is, it, is it a magical it weapon? Is, no, I don't, I don't. It says it's a big stick. Yeah, I have a big... It makes magic because it's my magic staff. <laughs> But you haven't given out any magic items except for the ring so far, as far okay. as I know. Yeah, have the ring that frosts my beer and makes it so people can't see me. <laughs> <laughs> so I give it the clubbering of 13 damage. Okay. I have recorded that damage. When you hit it, it seems as if your club meets a little bit of resistance and then goes right through some of this uh, creature's matter. And this creature seems as if it's made up of maybe air or some kind of element it's not solid mm. there's less resistance than you'd like you'd like to see the same thing happen to this creature that happened to that cultist yeah i like resisting theodore you are uh, now at the top so part of the airy the griffin looks like it's getting rather agitated with you and it is uh getting ready to charge he's did invisible. it change its position when i went invisible Oh, shit, you're invisible. Mm -hmm. It's very confused and getting ready to fly out the window. Okay, I'm going to peek over the edge, and uh, I'm going to sharpshooter one of these guys. You will not get the... Eh, will you get an angle? Yeah, I guess you could get an angle from there. They are... <clears throat> well, how how? Well, hi, how? How high yeah. is this tower? <laughs> Are you sure? 80. It's about 90 ho. feet. <laughs> Hi-ho. And... Yeah. Are you and, going to uh, use gonna... sharpshooter? Yeah, I'll use sharpshooter. I have advantage because I'm invisible, or I believe I do. So, um... uh, And I'll use uh, Hunter's Mark before I do. I believe you do too. Invisibility. Anyone know offhand if that gives you advantage? It does. Okay. But so you have Hunter's Mark, one shot. of them. Uh, I'll do the one that's closest to Arthur. Okay. 
Oh. And I rolled a natural 20. Fine red mist. He meets us. Is it now the whole... Found it. Is that a total <laughs> of 36 damage, or is that 22 damage? I can't tell. Uh, I rolled a 1 on the damage die, and it's a... Uh... He rolls 1d6 plus 15, so it's 16, and then the crit damage is 5 more, right? Because the thing automatically rolls another die for you instead of doubling your die. So it's recording 21 crit damage. Okay. Okay, so the total damage is 22. What's the 21. 14 for? 21. The 20, no, because he had advantage, right? So the 14 uh... was his first roll. The 22 was his crit and then underneath the 22, it has the damage for it. Okay, that's understandable. It does hit him square in the shoulder, but he manages to stay alive and on. Mm -hmm. I'm not as happy as I thought I was going to be with this. Yeah, that's, that's not <laughs> as cool as when I smack the guy with my keg. <laughs> keg <laughs> magic. So this and I'll, uh, is kind of I'll move my head back so that it, they can't this see guy, me. You <laughs> actually shot the other one, um, Theodore, because this guy fell out the window. That was the rope you okay. shot. But this guy took 22 piercing damage. And he's trying to get in the room. He is now um, out of line of sight with Arthur and the orb and the chest. Okay. Go ahead... Oh, them, below. Actually, they're going up towards the airy. You are now visible. Theodore, when you shoot. And these two oh, right. go up. They probably weren't expecting exactly this to happen. Just like you weren't. What are they going to do? I don't know. <laughs> it's me. <laughs> <laughs> Do I see any ranged weapon? <laughs> you see that they both have what looks like scimitars. Hmm. Oh man, you could almost just leave them up here and run out of the Featherfall side, and they, I'm sure the Griffins will eat them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I <laughs> this guy in the top right throws his scimitar at you. Wow, he's desperate for <laughs> for momentum. <laughs> he's trying to push himself the other way by throwing his scimitar. He's trying. It'll be... I think that's still a strength attack, so you roll a d20. Yeah, I think it's a improvised weapon. So he's going to roll a d20 again. This is my last inspiration. I'm finally using him. What's your AC? 17? 17. <laughs> well, he is proficient. Do you gain proficiency He's... with improvised weapons? Uh, Only if you have a feat. Yeah, yeah there's a that gives you proficiency. Half a brawler or some shit. Yep. Unless it has some sort of range on it for a thrown no, weapon like a dagger a or a hand weapon. axe. You see the scimitar kind of rise up in that levitate spell and go over your head. <laughs> and it slams against the wall. The other guy is just going to thrash around and try to get to the edge as well as he can with an athletics. All right. Just in my true fashion, these guys are so screwed. <laughs> they did not come with a plan. They to die. This is what, what were you thinking of doing today? <laughs> did no one account for this place? <laughs> At that point, Well, that was um, them. Carmen. I have a question. Yes. Could I use my spiritual weapon to push me? If I'm in the lift? Well, you can move it, though. Let's go read the spell. Of, that's a weird question. DM Fiat, I'm sure, because I read the spell, and it's not really super clear. It says... I can link it. Boop. You yeah, link, link it. it. Okay. Boop. Floating spectral. So that's already not looking good for you. It does force damage. It does force damage. 
Could I smash Maybe you can knock yourself out? <laughs> you can definitely hit yourself with it. I have no problem with that. <laughs> okay. All right, cool. Um, it is concentration, I... so that'd be interesting to see if you <laughs> knock yourself out of it. I, I, okay, so if I hit myself with it, though, would it push me out of the levitation thing? Yes. Okay, so five. I don't know, so that's 10, 25. So move 25 to there. I move it with me onto the lift. And when I get into the right spot, I smash myself with it <laughs> to push me onto the second floor. <laughs> Roll to hit. You've shown me that you have spirit. Can you even that's hit right. yourself? <laughs> I don't know. I didn't try yet. Let's see if I hit myself. Um, how does that Is work? Is that something you can choose to fail? Yeah, can I just let it hit me? You know what? Just roll it, and I'll give you the damage of what happens. Okay. Because you're not um, trying to be careful. You're just trying to do it. All right, so I rolled a hit. Roll a hit, and we'll just take the damage for what it is. Okay. You would have hit anyways. It. Was it good? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. I hit myself. <clears throat> seven force damage. You knock yourself against the chest, and a hard thud... You feel it compress, and you're pushed backwards towards the uh, kind of. I the want bed to push area. myself towards the bed. Yeah. Yeah. So smash. So move yourself Ow. up. There. Ouch. Okay. Um. Uh, I have to do it in stages because I'm yep. all. It's so a dead. giant map. So there we go. A giant map for giants. There I am, and I have taken four damage. Right. Four damage okay smash so i moved i bonus action smashed myself and i have still an action left do okay. i see this guy yes he's in the window he's climbing in. it looks like dragon? he's headed straight towards the orb no you don't see the dragon because the bed frame is like 10 feet high okay you can't even see over the bed frame and 20 i move that's as far as I can move. I move to the orb to defend the orb. Okay. You guys still there? Yeah, okay. Yeah, I'm here. All right, it's just, I heard a weird noise. It was like... Doo -doo -doo. Oh, I'm getting an email from work. That's what it is. <laughs> <laughs> Don't understand. Okay. Uh, so I move to defend the orb. Cool. That's my stuff. I'm done. Okay. Over the bed frame, you hear and feel at the same time an extreme heat start to fill the room as the dragon latches on to the side of the tower. Oh, fuck. And breathes Please. fire. <laughs> All inside of Zephyros. Oh, He's just no. sitting on the bed, casting his ritual. I hope he wakes up. <laughs> now be a good time for you to wake up, bro. <laughs> no kidding. So let's go ahead and roll that damage. I'll even yell at him as I'm coming up and smash myself and stuff. I'll be like, wake the fuck up. We're I I all going to die. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. That's great. Unbelievable. Well, that's not all of it. I just don't oh, have okay. anything higher than that. It's just impressive. <laughs> that is impressive. It's 10d6? Oh my Jesus. god. Jesus. What? 15d6? There we go. It's 16d6. And we just lost someone. Oh my god. I'm, here. I'm here. That is a horrible amount of 14, d6. 14, 30, 49 damage. He oh breathes 49 God. fire damage, and you see the bed frame now spark up. <sighs> and it lights on fire. It's hot inside this tower. The... Is Zephyros dead? No, Zephyros is alive. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> but now he's awake, and the fire doesn't singe the cloud beard or hair like it would normal hair. And his robes, amazingly, remain intact. The staff he has sitting on the side of the wall, like propped up against the wall in the bed, he grabs, he snaps out of it, and he runs to the window where this attack came from. 
Yeah, I'm like, we're all gonna fucking die. There's a dragon. Wake up! You're screaming. As down below, Tom and this invisible creature are facing off. Mm-hmm. It has one goal. It has one thing in mind, and it's going to keep trying to do it. Wait a second. What's your AC? Fourteen. It slams you for eight bludgeoning damage. You bastard. And then slam. It has two attacks. It has two attacks, but it botches its second attack. And now you can fully see its form. It's starting to gather debris and different things around that are giving it an actual mass. And it's no longer um, invisible at this point. Uh, Are you raging at least? You should make it blood from the guy that he already smashed. It picks yeah, it's up. It's a little turn. bit of blood. <laughs> the invisible bloody stalker. <laughs> Eight. Did you only take four bludgeoning damage because you're raging, or no? Oh yeah, divide you by two. Me. Is that yes. how that works? That is how that works. When you're raging, you divide all bludgeoning, slashing, piercing damage by two. Unless it's Jake. magical, which it is not. Okay. No, even if it's magical. All bludgeoning, slashing, piercing damage divided by two. But he takes oh, fire, lightning, whatever stuff damage by yeah, full. There might right? not actually be. Well, what about magical weapons? Same if it's thing? bludgeoning, slashing, or piercing, he's okay. Okay. He, he takes less. Because I don't think it makes the 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 race or the class feat That's feature fine. doesn't make a distinction. Wow. Yeah, it doesn't. That's amazing. Yeah, there is no distinction actually between magical. Piercing, slashing, and uh, bludgeoning. It's just some monsters have resistance to weapons that are not right. magical. Okay. So, so it's different than a range. And put them in. Yeah. Exactly. This guy jumps out the window. He's not going to get right next to you for good reasons. And he starts assaulting the orb. Oh, no, we don't. Oh, while you're above the ocean. That's got to stop. <laughs> that can't happen. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> the fates have been reamed. Yeah, he's a bad job. Right. I haven't Morgan. rolled above, like, a five on a D20 yet, so I don't think it matters. <laughs> he rolls to hit the orb, and it sparks off as he slams his scimitar into it, and it bounces backwards. I'm like, oh, you fuck, leave that thing alone. Do you Arthur? want to kill everyone? You'll die uh, too. Um, Next to you, the bed's on fire. Yep, yep. I'm going to use control flames, and I'm going to try to get that down into a little ball. Or hey, extingu- hey. Extinguish it. Yeah, you can put it out. Can you link control flames? Is it a cantrip or a spell? It's a cantrip. It is so, non-magical fire. Well, so it is non-magical. This is just lit on fire because of the Oh, because breath. of magic. So yeah. he can pick a five-foot cube and instantly extinguish the flames in the five-foot cube. So you do realize, though, that this bed is huge. Uh, almost yeah, 20 feet wide. You can do it wide. bit by bit. You can do yeah, it bit by bit. That's what I'll be trying to do. Nothing else will be burnt down on my watch. <laughs> Save the bed. So 14 turns later, the bed will be extinguished. <laughs> hey, he's going to get there. He's going to get it. <laughs> do you want to move? Do you want to use a bonus no. action? Uh, I can't cast another spell right now, though, can I? You could cast a bonus action spell. Uh, so I can cast Firebolt? Nope. That's no. an action. Mm, no, like, you can also no. move. It's starting to get pretty hot right where you're at, and you're starting to feel the sweat dripping from your forehead from this uh, fire. Uh, I guess I'll move out. Okay. You can uh, go ahead and move yourself. 5, 10, 15, 20. I'll just move there to the other side. <laughs> you move to the other side of the chest. Yep. Tom. Tom. So this guy is 
fully visible to me right now, right? For right now, you see the blood starting to uh, swirl inside its body and give it form and mass. But you also see the blood starting to spill away from it as it's spinning and turning and moving. And it will be invisible again next turn. Hmm. It's literally only visible to you because it keeps botching. Keeps botching. <laughs> <laughs> um... All right. Well, I think I'll I'll give it the gusto for now and see if I can keep it on its toes. I think I missed some turns or something. Did I, Arthur? Tom? No, I didn't. Okay. I think so. Maybe the cultists. Just thirteen hit, or did mm. you? My cultist. Yeah, the the other the cultists. Cares cultists didn't do anything. I think I got them backwards. Yeah, well, there's only so one more, actually. True. This guy goes up, and they are all going to end up together eventually. Wait, no, no. This guy on the bottom floor, I brained him. Did you brain him? Yep. The two guys on the bottom oh, floor he's I took he's dead. Out. You killed him. Yeah, he's dead, dead. There's the two in the lift and the one trying to kill the orb. They're both trying to get out, so they will roll their athletics. Is this after me? Uh, they technically after... go before you. They're the 20s. Oh, I thought those were the ones on the top, which was the scimitar trying to attack the shield orb thing. Is it? I think I got them backwards. Yeah, that guy was supposed to go later. But it Oh, okay, matter. the scimitar guy was supposed to go later? Because I haven't had a turn since the guys threw the scimitar at me. Really? Basically, you okay. skip, so I switched you skip the whole top floor, basically. You skip the top floor. So they're going to go after you, and they're going to try to get away. But right now, one guy is defenseless. But first, Thomas. Yeah. I take a big old swing at him. Is that enough to hit? 13? 13 is not a hit. You swing well, through it. <laughs> no, I don't, because I rewrite history with my final inspiration. There you go. Dude, you are stocking that stuff up. Yeah, well, I got two of them right off the bat, and I figure I'm going to forget to use them all right that so, is a hit whew. for so, another 12 so. bludgeoning damage and then i'm going to uh, yeah so my instant teleportation doesn't have uh doesn't have doesn't provoke. Sight. no teleportation never provokes is it before you know or after you attack it's a bonus action, so oh, it doesn't cool. matter. But, uh, um, you know what? I I probably wouldn't teleport, though. I wouldn't go anywhere. I've got my quarry right here, unless he's trying to flee. No, it seems like it's very focused, and it has one task, which is to keep bludgeoning itself against you. Yeah, when I'm hitting it, does it feel, like, does that feel satisfying? Like... Like, I'm doing it, or am I literally fighting wind right now? Like I said, it doesn't feel like you're getting the full resistance that you'd like, but it seems like you're doing something. You even swung through it and collected a little blood from it on your staff. Okay, so it's just a challenge. <laughs> okay, yeah, <laughs> right. I keep going. I keep fighting the wind. Okay. <laughs> My friends are in the castle. Theodore. <laughs> uh, so how does this... Uh, where's the... Featherfall area. Is that it's here? The two northern and here? squares. The two northern squares. So, like yeah. up here and down here is the. Okay. Yes. So, I'm going to shoot this guy. The guy that's still armed and thrashing, yep. trying to get back to the edge. Uh, before I do, I'll move my hunter's mark over to him. Okay. And. I don't even know if I should uh, move it. Yeah, I'll do sharpshooter. Why not? Oh, oops. I wasn't supposed to roll with advantage. Should be the first one. Ten. Ten is not enough to hit. The arrow goes Thanks. wide, and the griffin behind him squawks as it happens. And I'm going to go into the featherfall area. <laughs> <laughs> you jump through. <laughs> now. Oh, I was going to go around. You're going to go around. Okay. And you go downwards. So you can move yourself down around here. Down. 
Is it over the same hole or no? If you get the right... Well, well how are you uh, throwing yourself down the hole? Straight down? Uh, down at an angle and you can hop off on the floor below. You can I was going to say I would be hopping from here over. Oh, so you'd go towards Carmen. So, yeah, I would go more like in this direction. Yeah. So right there? Yep. Okay. Sweet. And, and that's my turn. This guy is still trying to get out. One of them made their roll since I was way out of turn order. And he gets to the edge. And he's going to step off the ledge. The other guy is just stuck up here. You don't know what's going on with him. You might hear him screaming in a bit. Yeah, right. <laughs> you see Zephyros go up to the window and he prepares some kind of spell. If you have any um, Arcana, you might know what he is casting as a blast of cold extends from his hands towards the dragon that's perched itself right outside that window. And you see this blast of cold start to swirl and the ice chunks start to blizzard around and they're slamming themselves up against this creature. That's what he does on his turn. What level? What are we at? Carmen? After Carmen... I think we're going to call the game mid-combat, which I rarely do, oh, but it's 12-15. Wow. Okay. Um, so I get the last deal. All right, I move into this guy. Mm -hmm. I'm going to punch him in the face with my hammer. That's punch. what you do. Where's your spiritual weapon? It's uh, it's still over here, I think. Yeah, I, never, I didn't. 20 feet per? Yeah. Yeah. So I miss him with my punch. I'm just going to recast it behind him and okay. punch him in the back of the head with my keg. Okay. So let me recast it. Da -da 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 -da. Actually, we'll, we'll say you had already recasted it up above because it was like a 100-foot rise. Oh, okay. And now you move it to him. That would make a lot more sense. Uh, okay. So I so can punch him again? swing, yes. You're just uh, from the second punch. casting. I uh, punch him for 11 damage hit. The egg. Yeah, you do. 11 force damage. Punch. He's already taken damage. Huh. You would not believe this. That's exactly enough. Finish him. Uh, I just punch his face in with it. Punch. Lethal? I mean, I don't have a choice. The keg's always lethal, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> this is your spiritual weapon. Right. You bludgeon his head right in front of your. <laughs> you just. I love how your happen. cleric weapon, uh, spirit weapon, is not able to take them down peacefully enough to not kill them. No. Nope. <laughs> Magic's always fatal, I guess. So, bounce. Whew. And yeah, the keg slams into his face, gives him a nice big imprint in his skull, smashes it in against the globe. You see his head bounce off the globe, leaves a bloody print behind it, and then his body f falls to the ground. Sorry, buddy. And on that note, <laughs> let's go ahead and call it. And let's turn off the battle music. Did that work? Perfect. It worked. Okay. Sure. I didn't hear the battle music in the beginning, so. Well, then you didn't have it up, which is fine. Nope. I have muted the music channel. Oh, all right. That was a bigger combat than I thought it was going to be. It's not done yet. There's a lot of moving parts going on in this building. Mm -hmm. But let's go ahead and do some shout outs before we do Roses and Thorns. So, shout outs. Let me go to our followers and where I left off. I left off with Modem Modem, so Xenonis, thank you for your follow. Blight, Mod is this, 
Grumpy Baker, Tales from the Grim, Jaeger 08 Larson, JC Wagney. Thank you for your follows, guys. Hey, um, you can't give out inspiration, Matt, to yourself. Nice. Nice. <laughs> nice try. <laughs> I like 28,000. I figured that, it, you know. We got time. another raid by Jeremy OBT. Thanks for the raid, guys. Thanks for joining us on this Sunday morning. Carmen, you got an inspiration. Oh, yay. To replace the one that I used. That's good. To yeah, replace the one that you used. We got a tier one sub to Brian. Tat GK, thank you for the uh, sub, hey. and it was from an anonymous gifter. I don't know if that's their name or it was actually anonymous, but thank you for the uh, subscription. Welcome to the Breakfast Club, Brian. That's that's Batman. Oh, nice. Discord Batman, if I remember correctly. Got it. Thanks, Batman. And thank you for your follow, Byron. That's all my shoutouts, guys. Uh, thanks for joining us. Come join us on Discord. We have a Discord channel in the link below. I'll link it here as well in the chat so you guys can just click it and join us if you want. Um, if you like the music, we have a YouTube channel with all this music. We put all these episodes up there as well. We put up some other different kinds of videos there every once in a while. Which after the quarantine, I was thinking, do you guys want to do that again? Do some well, yeah, uh, once we can actually get together. Sure, sure. Sweet. That'd be fun. Do, do what kind in. of se what kind of sessions? Our uh, D and D discussions. Oh, oh yeah. We sure. just like be asked about like our favorite spell or whatever. Actually, a lot of people liked the uh, familiar one, Josh. That was your idea. Oh yeah. The f favorite familiars. Mm -hmm. A lot of people like that one. So if you have other good ideas about something to talk about D and D wise, let us know. Cool. Uh, whenever we get off of quarantine, someday, maybe right. next month. <laughs> it's a lot longer than I want it to be. <laughs> yeah, I'm kidding. Says everyone. True. <laughs> I mean, I'm like strangely acclimating. I have a office now in my house. I think I might never go back to the real office. Yeah, I mean, once we learn how to do this, why would you? Right. Like. I can, you mean I can not have a crazy commute and not burn a whole bunch of money eating out at restaurants and not, you know, do all of those things? That sounds great. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Not eating out is definitely the biggest money saver. That That's And great. I, I like, haven't driven the car anywhere, so I don't have mm -hmm. to put gas in it. True. Yeah, I filled up uh, two times in the past month and a half, I think. I filled up one time, and that's only because my car was on empty when I parked it. <laughs> when this whole thing happened, so I, I have parked started it on empty. my car once, and it has been to move it so that they could clean the streets. There right. You go. <laughs> so. Awesome. Yeah. Oh, all right. Let's go ahead and do roses and thorns. I usually make someone else start, so I'll start this time. Roses and thorns. I'm going to say my thorn is probably this map combat. I feel like it's too big. And that's because I have a lot of moving parts. It might not be as big for you guys. I don't know. Because I'm only seeing it from the DM end. But there's so much going on and so many creatures that are involved in this combat. And things that are happening that I'm like... It seems prolonged, but it's still kind of fun. I don't think it's a big thorn. It's just my thorn. Roses. I want to say my rose is that this giant, he's kind of an interesting character. <laughs> I, I think I like him. I don't know how much yet, but I think he's the rose of my game, is... I don't know what to think of him, and I'm the one running him, so <laughs> <laughs> go ahead, someone else. <laughs> I will, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to second Zephyros, because I thought I was being intentionally daft 
when I was like, no, let's go be awesome with the cool giant. <laughs> what if yeah, he's I, okay? And then you were like, no, he actually is. And so, so that was fun. Um, and to have him be, you know, a kind of a f- fun mirror, fun house mirror version of me to the rest of the party where he's like a big blue thing, but he's actually not that bad. That was fun. I was like, uh, and, and it was perfectly timed because the new character and everything. Um, so that I think that he was probably my thorn too. You mean Rose, right? Rose? Yes, Rose. Rose, Rose, Rose. <laughs> that one. <laughs> so what if my brain, to, my, if, you know, we're only a couple of hours in. Pretty soon I'll be enough awake to actually be able to do this. Um, thorn. This is gonna this is gonna bother me because I'm gonna have to agree with Ryan twice. Uh, the map <laughs> the map where like there's four four different images of the map like trying to uh, you know scroll up and down and follow what's going on. It was super neat for the theater of the mind portion, but anytime like whenever I let my brain slip into the reality that you know the the guys watching on twitch couldn't you know scroll up and down on this map and choose what they were looking at i was it was distracting but that's only what i show them yeah just like sitting back and waiting and that's if i'm keeping up if you're remembering among the 900 other things that you're doing to properly show you know that stuff it's Hard business. Sweet. So, so that's that's it. That's the, the last time I'll ever agree with you twice. I don't know, Promise. man. I think it's becoming a pattern. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> Go ahead, Alex. Uh, I'll say my rose is probably. Uh, I'm gonna have to go a third with the giant. Uh, I thought it was uh, interesting how. I was like, this is a bad idea. This is a bad idea. Normally when I tell Brian it's a bad idea, it ends up being a bad idea. It's obviously a bad idea. (laughs) But this time it actually worked out pretty well, besides the fact that, you know, we're on a a floating castle that is being assaulted by a dragon. So, you know, besides that fact, uh, it wasn't a horrible thing. We seemed to actually do pretty well. But uh, I'll say my thorn... Uh, I didn't actually have that much of an issue with the uh, the map, and I didn't even think about Twitch because I wasn't watching it. But uh, I think ending in the middle of a battle, it'll be a weird start for the next one. True. Which I realized also that you don't like doing that, but it was just going too long. So It might not even That's really fun. end with a battle, because this was, it seems like you guys kind of cleaned it up pretty well. Mm-hmm. Just the dragon, you know. Just the dragon. But you got the guy that was assaulting the orb. Dude, that was funny. I actually hit him exactly enough. I mean, good. I, the last thing I want is anybody fucking with that orb. So. <laughs> <laughs> True. All right. Next is Matt. Um. Uh... So I'm gonna base my rose around my character. Uh, it was, it was, and everybody else. It's like, it, it's, it's, it's good to have uh, this, this talking time. I know I wasn't here last week, and I apologize. I was like everybody's thorn. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> don't think I didn't listen. It's just because we like you. <laughs> so. But my uh, so it was it, it's great to have this uh, character development as well. Um, it's my first time playing a full caster, and it's really neat to be able to think in between turns of how I'm going to use my spells. And I have so many options right now, so I don't necessarily like it was. It was good being a utility person. Like when I pushed off of. Alex and cast invisibility on so like the creativity is is there right so yeah, it allowed me to get a crit on a guy right yeah exactly like I was thinking about casting it on myself and I'm like oh no wait 
yeah, looks, you know, so I don't know, just the options are there. And I thought, I thought it was a, it was a, a fun round of combat without actually having to cast any kind of damage spells, even though I'm evocation, I just, you know, it, yeah, you'll it's fun there. to think out. Yeah. Well, it's fun evocation to think outside the box. Evocation doesn't change too right. much yet. It, no. And, and it's just. So, um, thorn. Uh, I don't know if I have a thorn. I really don't. Uh, I don't mind the map thing because it allowed me just to put my myself on the screen. I didn't go up and down to see what was going on because I figured I wasn't there. Uh, I don't know. Like I, did, I just I don't have a thorn about this. Game. I really don't. Sweet. Other than maybe en ending ending how we did but that's it's not a deal it's not a deal at all and i don't know if we lost josh oh we I'm lost still alex here. yeah i'm here i'm here wait really someone yep. hopped up we're all here on. there was just a weird oh, there glitch. it goes back to normal i was like seeing everything wrong go ahead josh um uh I don't want to be the same as everybody else, so I'm not going to say the giant. Although the giant was cool, uh, I, I really like. I've never used spiritual weapon before, and so that, that was really fun. It's like the bread and butter of cleric, man. I, I've I've never cast it, so I don't think I've ever played a cleric. Uh, Probably not uh, so in all fifth the fifth edition. No, uh, I I don't know if I've ever played a cleric ever. Yeah, I can't really remember it either. Nope. What about an so, anti cleric? You ever play one of those? It sounds like up your alley. <laughs> no, I don't think so. Evil cleric? No, you were an evil cleric once. I've never played a cleric. Huh. So, uh, uh, yeah, like, that was different and cool. And I can see why everybody wants to use spiritual weapon. Uh, it's like a second attack. Yeah, and if you upcast it, it gets beefier as, mm -hmm. as you upcast it. So that's kind of neat. Um, I don't know. Thorn, I am sad that a dragon is assaulting the tower. I didn't want to see a dragon this early, I guess. You've seen two. <laughs> I know, but I didn't want to see one that is not friendly. Well, there you go. <laughs> this didn't so, burn you. I didn't have much of a thorn. It was just like, eh, dragons are scary, I guess. It was a good game. I liked it. I didn't have a problem with the map. You know, it's a little bit cumbersome, but not horrible. I think and all, when it's this was big, it'd be like Theater of the Mind might be a little better. Maybe. Maybe. I think if we were but, at the table, it would have been Theater of the Mind, you know, in yeah. a live play. Oh, it's not bad. Like, I... I really enjoyed this game, so I can't come up with a really solid thorn. And the rose was like, it was a pretty good game all around. I like the fact that we got a big blue guy who thinks he's a wizard, and then we met a big blue wizard. That was pretty good. I don't know how planned that was, but that was kind of awesome. Uh, not. Completely not planned, as it far as I know. Out amazingly. <laughs> it's literally so. part of the module that you meet this big blue wizard. I mean, it was the best possible thing to happen yeah <laughs> definitely a weird coincidence yeah so no it was a good game all around i'm kind of more excited to see what a a rage wizard does or a wild soul barbarian i should say yeah well, he beats the ever living f out of people is what it looks like it's true oh Not so next week to cloud elementals or whatever they are <laughs> Yeah, it seems like it's doing what you do, which is resisting <laughs> a lot of the uh, bludgeoning damage. Yeah. You guys are... We've neutralized each other. Pretty much. You're just slowly killing each other. And I think you're winning so far. That's the hope. <laughs> that is <laughs> the way it should be, right? Next week, we'll start on the Red Dragon's turn what it does, and what everything else does. And hopefully that part will go real quick, just get through it. And we'll get to more of the story stuff, because I think you got quite a bit of story in this game, which 
I know you might have been a little worried that these are so open ended there might not be any story coming out, but mm-hmm. hopefully you'll figure out what's going on. <sighs> All right, I'm going to call it here, guys. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. We'll see you next Sunday at 730. Uh, That's it. Thanks.